Just the guy to help fill your picnic basket, Matt Abdu is the executive chef and owner of Pig Beach in Brooklyn, and soon also to be in Long Island City and Palm right. Beach, Florida this right. fall. Congratulations. Thank you awesome, very much. We've got a lot of exciting things yeah. in the works. We're super excited to be back here, though. I know. How we're cool so is that? To see you and you're looking fit. Thank you. We're, we're, we're working on all those good health things, you know, um, but trying to get there. But we got some beach. Snacks and lunches to bring today, right? I know, so what right? should we do? So you say a crunchy chicken wrap well, is the way to go. I'm a fan of great. chicken salad. I love chicken salad. Yeah, and I know too. it's going to be contentious, but I, I also love grapes in my chicken I'm salad. With you. Some me people too. like it, some I'm people don't. You. If you don't, don't put them in. It's totally yeah. okay. <laughs> um, but I also love making it with rotisserie chicken because it's like already done, it's already cooked. Who doesn't love rotisserie chicken? It's inexpensive, it's everywhere. So all we're going to do, we're going to really quickly just take some rotisserie chicken, break it down into the breast, the legs, the thighs, and we're just going to chop up the meat. There does not have to be anything sort of fancy. Just chop it up into little chunks or pieces, just yes. like that. Yeah. And then for the legs and thighs, just shred the meat. Really, okay. really simple, really, really easy. Okay. Save the bones, because if you want to make soup later with it, you can put some soup, uh, water, carrots, onion, celery, yeah. make a really quick chicken stock, chicken, yeah. chicken broth. Sure. You know, and then what we have here is all of How our you chicken get your meat. Bone. Yeah. Super easy. Next, to cut our grapes, we're going to give this little trick that everyone loves. This is loves. a hack. This is a great hack. You can use it for cherry tomatoes. Should you can I try use it with it or grapes. Are you scared for me? I, I'm not scared for you. Wait, what's about to happen? So you put two. You put the grapes between two. Two. Yep. Two deli containers that. Hold them in place, and then you can just serrate, slice. Jenna, look at you, girl. Look Jenna. at that. Now, I am so impressed. It cut in half. Well and that's done. Smart. Lean cut. I've well never done. seen that. That's yeah. so cool. I, oh, that's a high five right that's there. That's great that's work. You're, you're sous chef. You're hired. All right, so now in our mixing bowl, we're going to take that rotisserie chicken meat, the whole chicken, everything we have. We're going to put it in our bowl with some plain old mayonnaise. Of course. And then to that, we're going to add just you know a handful of grapes or so, sure. whatever we want in there. I got a little hot sauce, whatever your favorite yes. one is. Yeah. Some Dijon yes. mustard. If you don't like Dijon, if it's too spicy for you, you can leave it out. You can even put a little yellow mustard in there if that's what you want. Some freshly chopped parsley. Wow. Fresh lemon juice. I love bright citrus to the chicken salad. It gives it kind of just wakes it up, brings all those flavors nice and together. Some chopped shallots. This can be sliced scallions if you don't have shallots. And again, some crunch. Chicken salad crunch wraps. Yep. We got some smoked pecans to crunch those grapes. I thought you were gonna put some chips up in there. Well, we're wait, wait, wait we're getting there. Oh, we're not oh. there and last but not least, some chopped celery. So it's pretty much just standard chicken wow, salad that we look love. At that. That's Get a little beautiful. bit of salt and pepper, mix it all together, and then we're gonna slide down over here and we're gonna put it into our wraps. Now these are okay. great, any sort of wrap is a great thing to bring to the beach, yeah. just because it's self-contained, they're easy to eat. Yes. And once all of our meat gets all mixed together, mm. we're just gonna take a good spoonful of it. That's We're beautiful. gonna put it right in the center oh, of thank you, our Happy lunch. wrap. I have a spinach wrap here, but if you guys want tomato wraps or whole wheat wraps, whatever this you looks can find. Incredible. But this is the this is the this is the kicker, guys. We're gonna take some kettle cooked oh, potato yeah. chips. Oh, yeah. We're gonna crunch them up, put them right on top, and we're just gonna wrap them up to give that extra crunchy oh. effect to the wrap. Oh man. And chicken salad chick crunch wraps, bring it to the beach, oh, and you're it's good, so good. And you're good to go. Okay, you pair this with your grandmother's Gra eggplant. This is Grandma Ruth's smoky eggplant puree. It's basically baba ganoush. It's one of the things that I grew up eating. I absolutely love it. You can make it, put it in a little deli container, put it in the cooler, bring it to the beach, yes. bring some pita chips or potato chips or veggies, dip it in and go nuts. Mm. And any good beach plant, plant has to have a sweet spring at the end. What do we got? And what's better, what's better than a blondie bar? Oh, but these are wait, beach blondie bars. Pig beach blondie bars. Let's do one of those, so, Jenna. You think blondie you can bar, pig beach? Uh, you can. We're at, they're on the sweets menu at Pig Beach right now. They're just mm. basically a white brownie, guys. But oh, in the middle of it, we have some on. butterscotch chips and white chocolate no, chips in there to really bring it all together. Oh. Matt, they're this is so to bring delicious. They're perfect for Self-contained, okay. easy, no mess. By the way, how do you store these sandwiches so we don't ruin them? So the best way to do it, guys, if you're going to make these sandwiches before you go to the beach, pre-make them without the chips, and then when you're ready, open them back up, put the chips in so the chips don't get soggy or stale. Bring them in the cooler. That way they stay in. nice and crunchy. Amazing. Absolutely. Every bite is great. I'm having this for lunch. To get these recipes, you can head to today.com slash food. Thank Matt, thanks. Thank you so much, Matt. Congratulations. Oh, congratulations. Thank you for having me back. Yeah. It's so great to be back in the plaza, everybody. We love it. Oh, this is so <laughs> great. And we are going on a picnic, and I'm bringing a whole lot of delicious stuff, so I hope that you guys are showing up with your We're appetite. Ready. Yes. Oh, okay. Yep. For sure. So, so I like to pasta say. Pasta salad is always yeah. good to bring on a picnic. And everything is betta with bruschetta. <laughs> so that we're going to be making a bruschetta pasta salad. And you won't be believe how easy it is. So here what I've done is I have, according to the package directions, just boiled and drained 
four cups of pasta. Okay. You don't want to do the whole box because I don't want to dilute the bruschetta. Mm -hmm. And here I have a plum or Roma tomato. You're going to dice about five of these, super small. And you can you see like here. because they're not as like juicy? The juices yes, don't run all over the They're not as place. liquidy. But mm -hmm. you can use any tomatoes that you have in your house. You do want to just drain some of the liquid out okay. so that you don't dilute the flavor. So here I have five of them. Okay. I'm going to put this in. So Dylan, why don't you throw in the that's just going to be red onion. Okay. But tell us diced. about the pasta because it's this not. This is good. So this is a protein pasta. There's You could do a, be, a bean or lentil-based pasta. There's so mm -hmm. many varieties out there. Oh, okay. But truly, if you want to mm. stick with a regular, that's minced that's garlic. Let's put that in. Minced yes. Garlic. But how great a little bit of salt, a little bit so of pepper. So don't kiss anyone after you. No, yeah. <laughs> but except that they'll be eating it also. <laughs> so true. it sort of neutralizes. Garlic, garlic neutralizes. And this is a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Okay. And the signature herb, this is going to be minced basil. And the more, the better. So you can mix that up. Okay. Are we and putting the, this in too? Oh, and that's balsamic. Balsamic vinegar. Okay. Yes, yeah. I'm so sorry. It's really good. This is really good. And though. then you could mix this up, Dylan, and you could put in the option for either shaved Parmesan or some of these mm, pearl mozzarella. mozzarella. Yeah. Really and good. this is what it looks like. That's and you it. pop it in the fridge and let Ooh, all those flavors good. mingle together. And I'm telling you, even the next day, Tastes it so becomes fresh. better yes. and better. Oh, yes. Yeah. And it's light and it's filled with fiber, nutrition, and protein. That's actually it. great pasta, too. It is that really good. Good. And it yeah, that's a protein pasta. A yes, these, exactly. These vegetables, sometimes, you know, when you cook with vegetables, you get worried they're going to be too bland. How do you marinate them and how do you know when they're ready? So this is one of my most favorite recent creations. Okay. It is a hearty veggie hero with pesto. Ooh. And so what I start with here, let's let's do the marinade. So okay. this is just apple cider vinegar. And you can also swap in champagne vinegar, um, okay. balsamic vinegar, red wine vinegar. Now I'm putting in Italian seasoning. Okay. Jill, you throw in the salt and the pepper. Okay. And we whisk this up. And while you're whisking it, you're going to pour in some extra virgin olive oil so it'll Instead. emulsify. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, I have my vegetables of choice for this sandwich. We have eggplant, artichoke, zucchini, mm -hmm. red onion. I love you, how you say it. Oh, <laughs> I know. Like, I get excited about yeah. vegetables. Yeah. You pour right and over there, huh? You pour That's it good. right over. You mix this up. You let it marinate. If you have the time for about 30 minutes, okay, then you sure. put it out on baking sheets in a single layer, pop it in the oven at 400, and let it oh, roast you for roast about it. Yes, mm, 20 wow. to 25 minutes. Okay. Okay. Then you're ready to build. So here we have oh a shareable goodness. sandwich, <laughs> oh and I layer on the roasted, yummy, caramelized eggplant. Mm. So this is also loaded with fiber and wow. nutrition. These are our zucchinis. Oh, I love that there's yummy. red onion. I, know. I have red pepper. I have artichoke hearts. This is not going I to be like so oh Red onion. And then to take it over the mm -hmm. top, guys, has about this. What is that? Balsamic glaze. Oh, oh my wow. goodness. Careful. And we're not right. done. Some mozzarella, only if you want. You could keep it vegan if you mm. choose. Ooh, is it yummy? And then last but not yeah. least, it's, there's pesto in the name. So. Pesto is the best. And it ha yes, yeah. right. Bruschetta is the better, pesto. and pesto is <laughs> oh, the best. So I have to try and that. And then you put this over the top. You close your sandwich. You slice it up, and guys, nobody oh, will be hungry. Joy, this is joy. Everything Amazing. about the sandwich is, is perfect. Great? Yeah, I know. and I don't like veggie sandwiches, but this is this perfect. is like this might be one of the butter. best veggie sandwiches I've ever tasted. I'm the so pesto happy. Puts it over the what's top. your what's we, your technique to eat it? We devoured it. You know what? You just dig in there. Look at this. You put this on top. Oh, wow. Boom. I Sometimes, slice it mm. into about one inch thick slices. I got to go in too. This yeah. is so good. You know what I think it is? You roast the veggies. You don't miss meat. Like mm -hmm. some people uh -huh. miss it. Yeah. Mm. Isn't that good? Wow. It's, it's really good. good. Yeah. So you don't good. miss the meat. You're right. If anybody wants to like cut the carbs, just eat it open face. Yeah. Right. It's so is easy. Mm. Well, this, is why recipe. this is why we're so glad you're back. Yeah. Yay. Finally get to eat it. Joy, thank you so much for these recipes and more. Head to today.com slash food.
joining us this morning to share some of her favorite summer-inspired recipes. Erin French, chef, owner of the Lost Kitchen Restaurant in Freedom, Maine, the star of the Lost Kitchen on Magnolia Network. Uh, to cook these dishes couldn't be easier, folks. Scan the QR code to order all the ingredients with one click. Select Add Ingredients to Cart, then schedule a pickup or delivery. Erin, mm. clearly the table this is, is all... This is Stop it. Yeah. So delicious. So you've become quite the Today Show favorite pretty quickly. <laughs> no. Hey, it's easy with fried chicken. I, I'm renting. Because here's the thing. The bar with fried chicken for a lot of folks is pretty high. Mm -hmm. This looks amazing. So walk us through okay. the first step. So the secret to this. So this is a fennel fried chicken, which is just a little bit of a different twist on things. So it starts with the brine, and that's the real secret. Mm. So a brine is just going to add flavor. It's going to keep it juicy. So we just brine this overnight. It's got some fennel seed. It's got some mm. black pepper, some bay leaves, some sugar. And then we cook it in the brine just to sort you of... cook it in the brine? You cook it in the brine. You let it sit overnight, and then you cook it. Okay. Just because you don't want to get that raw fried chicken right. when you're kind of moving along here. So it's already cooked, so you don't have to freak out. So you've got this all flavorful and ready to go. All right. And then all you have to do is dredge and fry it. So, Craig, if you just want to add in, this is some uh, ground fennel. More you fennel, okay. Whisk it right in. All right. And that'll make it nice and flavorful. And this is just regular flour here? Regular flour. Okay. And then we're going to start to dredge. So. And you use the whole chicken? We use the whole chicken. All so right. you can have your butcher break it down into about eight to ten pieces. And then um, you can just dredge it in the flour and the fennel. A little bit of buttermilk. Buttermilk. So we just keep adding flavors, you can okay. see. And then we go down to this mixture. And this is just ground cornflakes. I just broke them up. That's in it. A, I, knew, I wondered if that's it was it. oats or something. It's so crunchy. Mm. That's oh the secret. And it's really cheap cornflakes. That's really that's the secret. It. Cheap, cheap cornflakes, a little bit of um, cornstarch, and a little bit of flour, and okay. that's it. So it's nice and dredged, and then we can just drop it right in the fryer. If you don't have a fryer, you can put it in a Dutch oven with 375 degrees. And you make a really good point about not overcrowding the fryer. You never want to overcrowd the fryer because then you're bringing the temperature down, and if you want crispy fried chicken, yeah. you have to keep that temp up. So it comes out Look at it. It's perfect. It's and then so good. So good. It's so good. So and it's light. This juicy. is the lightest fried chicken. So juicy. And, what and are you then topping that with? I'm just sprinkling some uh, fennel pollen on top the for a little extra is flavor. Like, I mean, that's the kicker. It's so good. And it's so not good. overpowering. Mm -mm. It's like a subtle little flavor throughout. What is it about the fennel, Aaron, that you like so much? I just like that little extra flavor. It's not mm -hmm. just plain fried chicken, little fennel, and it yeah. tastes kind of summery. But then you add this other sauce, and this makes it even more delicious. It so does. I love rhubarb. I'm crazy about rhubarb. Okay. Rhubarb, a little sugar, a little vinegar, and then we add in some strawberries. Oh so you have a strawberry rhubarb, it's sweet so and sour, that goes with your fried chicken. And that's what you top it with. That's what you top it with. Oh, oh my god! You could also put it on a shortcake and make it dessert. <laughs> shortcake. <laughs> it tastes so good. And, Edible flowers. And to go with your fried chicken. This you, is delightful. You got to finish with a lemonade. Mm. So um, this is just a Thai talking. basil I'm lemonade. Yeah. Thai basil lemonade. You just make a simple syrup. Throw right, in the, the Thai basil. Too. Get the sauce. I don't get need the, the sauce. sauce. Yeah, but I don't that's what you think until sauce. you taste the sauce. Wait, yeah. what is that base that you just put in there? Thai basil lemonade. That's oh, what yeah. it is. You just top this in, and it's delicious, it's and it's basil. just a little bit different. Yes, mm. basil. Yeah, this is ridiculous. This it's is beyond and, lemonade. And my mother's well. fried chicken is wow. So yeah. this is on the. On don't the menu at the restaurant? This because no. <laughs> okay, she's not watching. This is on the menu. This is not on the menu, but maybe it should be on the menu. It should, this be. Is like, it should, should be definitely be on the menu. menu. Wait, basil before, lemonade? Who knew? Before we came on, I said, Aaron, you've got to open another restaurant yeah. in, in New York City, maybe in Connecticut. <laughs> and what was your response? No way. <laughs> oh, not no way. She said, and why did you, ex I think it's fascinating why you said no way. <laughs> because there's uh, just no way. One restaurant, I feel like, is enough. I well, feel like I have four children right now. requests. A year. About and 50, she's only open for like six price. months. But yeah. what you said that was, I'm in it for the love, not for the money. Right. Aww. So that's another reason. Well, we can taste the love. Yeah. Aaron French, thank, thank you. you. Aaron's going to come back in the third hour. Yay. We're going to make the fried chicken all over again. No, I'm kidding. We're going <laughs> to sure. make something else. Uh, by the way, to buy these ingredients and these recipes and more from our sponsor, Walmart, scan the QR Yum. code, or you can do the old fashioned way, today.com slash today table. Just so you know, today earns a commission from our purchases through our links. Fantastic. Oh my gosh. Happy Cheers Sol Solstice. Indeed. Happy Solstice. 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 Cheers, Cheers Aaron.
got something special cooking this morning, folks. Anthony Porowski, one of the stars of the Emmy award-winning Netflix series Queer Eye. He's also a self-taught cook and the New York Times best-selling author. His latest cookbook is called Let's Do Dinner, and he is sharing one of his recipes for pasta salad. And who doesn't love a good pasta salad? Yes. yes. Hey. Yes. Especially for you after all those steps earlier today. I need we need a carbo load. load. Absolutely. Yes. So, We're starting with zucchini. Yeah, how do you, yes. so you marinate the zucchini? Marinate zucchini, great way to sneak in those vegetables for those kids. It's green just like the pesto. So what I do is I just cut it really nice and thin. Mm -hmm. You can use a Y peeler like that you would use for potatoes just why? to get the slices really nice or and thin. Or a mandolin? Why? Why not? Or a mandolin would be good, but just watch out for your oh, fingers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, fast track, you got a bunch of them here in a bowl, and now we want to marinate these to kind of soften and mellow them out a little because okay. they're a little intense and crunchy. So, okay. lemon juice, okay. lemon zest, free ingredient that comes with the lemon, never uh, waste it, it's good in anything. Wow. Okay. Almost anything. A little bit of olive oh, oil. Yeah, simple. Some salt okay. that's going to release some of the moisture and let this sit for about 20 to 25 minutes. It's okay. so worth it. Okay. And you don't have to wait because you're busy making other things. Oh, okay. And then once the zucchini marinates, let's make, the, are we going to make the pesto? Pesto. Okay. So, and Anthony likes a bright pesto. I love a bright pesto. Mm -hmm. Nothing makes me more sad. Well, maybe a couple of things do. Well. Um, <laughs> like if my dog is sick, but then like a brown pesto. So what I like okay. to do is actually, if you put your blender canister in the freezer, the blade will stay cold. Oh. Or you can blanch your basil leaves, but I don't have time for that today. Mm -hmm. So traditionally, pine nuts, we're using almonds that I roasted, mm -hmm. and then we're going to put a clove of garlic. Like you can the add real more. Deal. Roast in the, okay, I'm here for Gotta it. Gotta toast your nuts. Okay. Gotta toast them. Olive oil. <laughs> Gotta toast them. Some salt. Just don't look at Al, just keep going. <laughs> and then you basically he did that on purpose. <laughs> pulse it a bit. Okay. Uh -oh. If we can Maybe. figure it out. Well, you know, like it. There, there you go. You know. Toast that. Let's pretend that it's perfectly yes, formed. Yes, okay. Yes. And then basil, basil, a little by little. Yep. Why just like that? that. Why a little by little? If you add too much, it's going to overprocess. Uh -huh. Okay. So basically, you're just going to keep on pulsing that, and then you add the parm at the end. <laughs> put it back on. <laughs> okay. Yum, yum. And then All we right. have some very salty pasta water here okay. with mm -hmm. some farfalle, yep. some salty little salty like the ocean. Salty like the ocean. Taste mm. it. It's going to flavor everything. I think mm -hmm. I don't put enough salt in my water. Uh, try always until I... salt it more than you think you would. Okay. A lot of the salt is just going to go and be drained, but you don't want to drain this into the sink. You want to keep some of your pasta water. Okay. So what you do oh, yeah. is I'm you like put this in here. We'll just we'll do, do one more. Start. Try it. Why not? I'm, no, I'm like, I'm yeah. ready. And so then, then we have our pesto, the pesto, which we plop in. And you should do it while the oh pasta is warm. While it's nice and warm, it's going to help everything Are you meld nicely. Me? And what is, it, what is it about this kind of pasta that, that makes it? Why would you I not just use love a bow tie? Because it like kind of pesto is like nice and creamy and it gets in all the nooks and crannies. Mm -hmm. Also chili, really? uh, oh. chili flakes for a little bit of heat. Oh my mm -hmm. gosh! And, and you mean, can this use is amazing. You can use whole wheat pasta. You can use brown rice pasta, but make sure which to rinse will it. Will it taste it's this too good? It will. And this can actually sit in the fridge nicely. You can bring this to like a nice little barbecue. Oh my god! This is good. This is really good. Me alone, I would put that on a salad, like totally. the marinated zucchini. Marinated zucchini on its own with a little bit of oh parm and fresh pepper is a great, nice little mm. plant-based app that you can mm. do. Why did you, you use the almonds instead of the pine nuts, just out of curiosity? They're less expensive. I love almonds. Get them at Costco, keep them in the freezer. And I feel like everyone has almonds at home. I'm here hazelnuts, for this. Hazelnuts, walnuts, you can skip the nuts altogether if you want. This is fantastic. It couldn't be easier. Oh my God, and that zucchini, isn't that good? Is sure. zucchini? What would what would be a good, uh, you're, you're, you're a classy guy, what would be a good wine to drink? Ooh. A good wine, maybe because it's like summer, like a nice little, like a Friuli maybe, mm -hmm. or like a nice little Pinot Grigio, nice mm. and crisp. Mm -hmm. This is amazing. Next time you bring that too. Thank you so right. much. This is great. Thanks oh. for having me. I mean, me. I could do the zucchini all day. Like I just What's the name out. of the book again, Ann? Let's do dinner. Let's do dinner. All right. Good. By the way, uh, there's the book. If you want this recipe, you can go to today.com slash food. As always, we will be right back. Fantastic. This might be my new favorite thing.
It's still hot outside, so I think it's a good time to wrap up our Cool for the Summer series with a refreshing edition of Superfood Friday. Today, nutritionist Joy Bauer has two treats to help you beat the heat. Joy, you are looking lovely this mm -hmm. morning. How are you? Oh, thanks, guys. I am going to woo your taste buds with two recipes that I think scream summer. Ooh. And the first one is a summer cucumber salad mm -hmm. with vibrant fresh herbs. I hope you're going to love this. Very easy to put together. So here I have three cucumbers and I'm going to show you quickly how I cut them because a lot of people don't know how to get rid of the seeds. And, and for this particular recipe, it's important to do that. Okay. So I'm leaving the skin on for extra texture. So obviously I washed them and patted them dry and I'm going to slice right down the middle, just like this. I'm going to mm -hmm. pick this up to show you two halves. Mm -hmm. Now, most of the liquid is within the seeds, so mm -hmm. I'm just going to use a spoon oh, and scoop those out. seeds oh. right out. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's just, a little cucumber boat. Just yeah. like this. <laughs> it's very easy. Al, I love actually using these as boats and then stuffing them with things Ooh. like chicken salad or shrimp yeah. salad. There it's really go. fun. Oh, that sounds good. So now we're just going to cut them into super thin half moons. Wow. And I would do this for all three of them. I'm going to mm. show you, see what the pieces look like. And the skin is edible. Wow. So just make sure you wash it. You get mm. a little bit of extra fiber. You get a pop of color, but it keeps that firmness. Now I have taken all three of them and I put them, let me see, I'm going to push this over here. I, I, Ian is on the side. We love Ian. <laughs> and so I put them all in a colander and I put the colander on top of a bowl yeah. because it will generate a little bit of liquid. We're going to um, get rid of some of the um, liquid within the pieces of the cucumber and also um, incorporate a little bit of salty goodness. So mm. I added a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt and we're just going to let this sit for about 15 minutes. Joy, how come you now, don't want any extra liquid in there? Um, because I want the salad to be crisp, okay. and we're gonna we're gonna add in more liquid with the marinade. But I think that what will happen is the liquid from the cucumbers would dilute that uh, bold mm -hmm. flavor. Okay. Yeah. So now um, for the for the other fixins. So I have my bowl over here. Oh, I a have, beautiful bowl. Um, this is a, mm. it's gorgeous. Thank you. Oh, I got it as a gift. <laughs> Big Ooh. shout out to my girlfriends, <laughs> my tap hand crew. And so these are thinly sliced red onion, but you can also use a large shallot. So I dump that right in. I'm adding three tablespoons of white. Uh, white wine vinegar, but mm. really you can use apple cider vinegar, champagne vinegar, white balsamic vinegar, all the vinegars work, mm -hmm. and one teaspoon of honey. And mm. I let this sit for 10 minutes, and this is going to give it that delicious, sweet, pickly flavor. Yum. It really brings it together. So we're going to make believe that this has sat for mm. 10 minutes, and I now take our cucumbers that have been sitting, I add them right in the mix, along with, uh, this is a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. I'm only, only using one and a half a tablespoons, that's all you need. A little bit of crushed red pepper because I like mm -hmm. the heat. Yeah. And now for the fresh herbs. So this is where it becomes a vibrant party. Normally, I do like to give swaps for dried herbs. But honestly, with this salad, you just really need the fresh herbs. It's and anything beautiful. Works. It's really is. Oh, thank you. So this this is mint, what I put in. Mm -hmm. And now I'm putting in some parsley. But honestly, uh, any green, works with any basil, green cilantro. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Any green herb you want. I love dill, too. Mm -hmm. I tend to put a lot of dill in this as well. But this morning, you I'm just doing in the that? mint. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan, in you want to jump on in here? <laughs> a little bit of crushed. Um, actually, this is just ground black pepper. Mm -hmm. And we're just... Gonna look at this. We're just going to mix this thing wow. up. Let, let, I'm going to show you that you, you see the red onions yeah. really pop it beautifully. I see, so and that looks absolutely delicious, Joy, but we don't want to miss out on the strawberry lemonade because that looks just as yummy. Oh, oh yes. Okay. So we are totally switching directions. Yeah. And every <laughs> summer party needs a frozen strawberry lemonade. Yeah. So 
Um, it, it is ridiculously easy. Here's my beauty I've been sipping. So all you need to do is you take two heaping cups of frozen strawberries. And I would say frozen strawberries because mm -hmm. this is going to act as your ice. Okay. Okay. Ah. And two cups. And, um, and this version, by the way, is so much lower in sugar and calories, and it's packed with vitamin C compared to traditional versions. Okay. This is a quarter cup of your lemon juice. Mm -hmm. And this is just um, a 12-ounce can of a lemon-flavored sparkling water. Oh. So I put that right in. It gives it an extra lemon a little kick. Little fizz. Yeah. Yes, and this is just a tablespoon of honey. Okay. And really, if you want it very tart, you can leave out the honey. Mm -hmm. So I okay. don't want to cause a lot of noise, <laughs> but we would blend this up. But of course, for Al, there's one more thing. I just went and there. grabbed his <laughs> gin bottle. Oh, that's the gin I drink. <laughs> Hendrix so gin, baby. <laughs> that's the one. A little bit <laughs> in there. And in the spirit it's of research, the official research, gin I want of black <laughs> Vodka, tequila, light rum. Oh, tequila would be good too. Wow. And so we would whirl this up <laughs> right in the blender, only 20 seconds, because you don't want to over puree Over-puree it because right. it, will be, it will get oh too my thin. Gosh, well, Joy, it before we go, huge heaping cups. You'll before get we go, we understand you've got this. some other you've got some other uh, production assistants there you wanted to bring in. Your, uh, you your know nieces? what? They, they've all they've all dissipated. Oh. <laughs> and everybody ran around the house. Wow. I just wow. said, guys, it's showtime. Come on down. Yeah, bye -bye. They took their drinks <laughs> right, they and they their took shot. off. <laughs> there we go. We saw. But you know what? Hand. Also on on Instagram, I'm also going to um, show how to make the peach version of this mm -hmm. because we were like torn. We didn't know which one we liked better: the okay. strawberry, okay, lemonade, so let's or the Ian. Ian. Let's just see Ian. He, here he comes. Al, you know he Hi, only Ian. does this for you. Come here. That's my oh, man. Yes. That's my Aww, man. So cute. Thank you, guys. That's so funny. Okay, Bye -bye. thanks, Joy. And, of course, it's all on today.com slash food. The Today Show's newest fan. The sun is shining and we fired up the grill, y'all. Join me, Jocelyn Delk Adams, for a summer barbecue to remember. As a chef and cookbook author, I love to add a modern twist to classic recipes. With my tips, you can host an outdoor cookout that looks effortless and won't cost a fortune. Bringing all of your loved ones together, it makes the day that much sweeter. Food, this party's going to be epic. Growing up, I absolutely loved summer barbecues. For me, it just felt like a time to get family and friends together and really just enjoy the weather and each other and some good food. My inspiration for a party comes from a variety of places. I love everything from travel to new restaurants. It all sort of kind of informs all of my ideas and decision making when I'm throwing a party. I guess you could call me an events rebel. I really love to break the rules. And I love that because it's really fun to sort of have something unexpected at your event. The first thing that's most important with creating an event that you absolutely love is starting with the vibe and building it with your personality. If you could bottle my personality, it would probably be like a bright orange color. So that's gonna be all through this event. I love throwing barbecues outside. If you've got a pool, which we happen to have, like why wouldn't you set an entire event around that? You know you are always at a great party when the playlist is hot. So I wanted to focus on creating a playlist that had a lot of fun, energetic songs that made people wanna get up and party. I love games at events. Seriously, if we do not have games at my event, it's not one of my events. I love everything from activities that I actually make up. I mean, it's all about making sure that your guests have a good time and games help with that. 
Next, make sure that you stay organized. I am truly type A, y'all, okay? I am a person who lives and breathes by spreadsheets. When I'm thinking about an event, I start with the spreadsheet so I can stay organized, keep my guests in there, keep what I've ordered, keep what I'm serving. Literally every single detail goes in that spreadsheet. For your guest list, it's truly important that you spend a lot of time thinking about who you want seated at your table. I decided to make this party all about the amazing gals in my life. I really wanted it to be this mix of amazing women that I appreciate and who I'm inspired by. And finally, create a unique menu. When I start to think about my menu planning for my barbecue, I really want to knock my guest socks off. I love to incorporate things that are in season. So a couple recipes I'm thinking about are maybe a watermelon salad. Watermelon is in season right now, so that's gonna be so fresh. Also, corn is in season. So, and I've got this like amazing corn pudding, but the key is the, the corn is grilled. So it's like a nice time to actually use the grill, get some nice char on that corn, and actually give it some nice texture and bite. I think I know exactly how I want this day to flow, so let's get in the kitchen and start getting that menu going. For this barbecue, I selected some of my favorite recipes that I'm gonna show you how to make. First, we're gonna start with my simple ribs. Then we're gonna move on to my elote fried corn pudding from my new cookbook, Everyday Grand, along with my watermelon salad, and then finally, my berry rhubarb punch. We're gonna get started with my simple ribs recipe, and it starts with a dry rub. I've got some Cajun seasoning here. I've got some kosher salt, gotta get some nice salt in there. I've got some mustard powder. And then I've got onion and garlic powder. I'm gonna add both of those in here. Black pepper, some smoked paprika, and I've got some chili powder. Cumin, I love cumin in literally everything. And finally, I've got some brown sugar to add some sweetness. And then we're just gonna do a quick whisk of all of this, combining it. So I started making my own spice rubs at home when I realized how easy it was to do. Like you could literally just go in your pantry, grab all of your favorite ingredients and pull together something that's explosive flavor wise. I happen to like a lot of different flavors in my dry rub because I want a lot of different sensations to happen when you bite into that rib, right? You want that sweet, you want that heat, you want that nuance of flavor. And so all of these different components are gonna pull that off. And once that's combined, we're gonna get that on our ribs. These are beef ribs. And I'm going to grab some oil spray. So I like to use the oil spray. It's a little bit more controlled and it just kind of keeps things a tiny bit cleaner during this process. The oil is going to become an adhesive for our dry rub. And then we're gonna start to add our dry rub right over our ribs. And you can add as much or as little as you want. The purpose of a dry rub is really to get that flavor penetrated into our ribs. And it's gonna take a little time because we're not breaking this down with what you would usually find in a wet rub. I'm gonna flip these over. We're gonna do another spray. And then we're gonna get that dry rub all up in there as well and you really wanna push it into the meat so it really penetrates and you get all of that flavor. My favorite thing about barbecues are definitely the ribs. It's my favorite recipe. It's the quintessential barbecue recipe, right? So I think that all of my side dishes are gonna be the perfect complement to this main dish because this is really hearty, but it's got so much flavor, but everything else is sort of light and refreshing. So it's a perfect complement. All right, these look nice and rubbed down. So I did a quick rinse of my hands and now we're gonna get these ready to go into the fridge. I've got some heavy duty foil because we wanna make sure that every little crevice, everything is covered so we really get that marinade to seep in. I'm gonna go one rack at a time here. Really get it covered. The ribs are wrapped and ready to go. I'm going to add these to my baking sheet, and then I'm gonna pop this in the fridge for about six hours at least, so we can really get that marinade in there. And then we'll be ready to grill. 
All right, our ribs are marinating, and now when we come back, we're gonna get into our sides. ribs are marinating, I'm gonna get started on my elote fried corn pudding. This recipe was inspired by my trip to Mexico City and I wanted to really sort of mix in some of that authentic Mexican flavor with some of my southern roots. The first step is in grilling our corn. I've got some shucked corn here and I'm going to add a little vegetable oil to the outside of it so we can make sure that this doesn't stick to the grates once we're grilling. Now I'm gonna take these out to the grill. I love adding in that char and that bite of grilled corn and it's an amazing way to use it while it's in season too. Now that we've grilled our corn, it's time to get started on our filling. So I'm going to start here with some Mexican crema that's gonna go into our big bowl. This is so rich and creamy, it's gonna add so much flavor. And then I've got some melted butter. We've got four eggs here, and it's best that you crack them outside of the big bowl, so if you get any shell, it doesn't get into your major mixture here. Now I want to zest some lime so I can add in some citrus flavor. It's really gonna brighten this up. Now I've got some sugar. If you've ever had corn pudding in the South, you know it's a little bit sweet, so we gotta add in that sweet. I'm adding in some cornstarch. This is gonna help thicken everything up. And then a few spices to add some additional flavor. I've got some garlic powder, and I've got some cumin. Now this is where I get to add our grilled corn that we took off the cob. You can get that nice bite and that texture from those kernels. This is creamed corn that you can find just right in the can in your grocery store. And it's a very different texture from that grilled corn we made earlier. We're also gonna add in some cotilla cheese. I'm going to mix all of this together, make sure it's nice and combined. Before we add this to our casserole dish, I'm just gonna lightly spray this so we can make sure that it doesn't stick. And then we're just gonna pour all of our corn pudding mixture right into our casserole dish. I'm gonna add some foil to this so we can have a nice even bake and it doesn't brown too much. Now I'm gonna pop this in the oven and we're gonna let this set up and get so nice and beautiful and brown and then we'll be ready to serve. Our corn pudding is out of the oven and let's check it out. Oh my goodness. You can just see all of that grilled corn that's come to the top and this sort of creamy, custardy texture. I like to add some decorations and really take it to another level. I like to add a little bit more of the cotilla cheese. 
And then I also like to strategically place a few little limes here, little lime slices. Adds a little color as well. I'm gonna add some cilantro too. And then finally, I'm gonna sprinkle on a little tahini and that little brightness with that chili and lime flavor is just gonna take this up to like a whole nother level. It's so good. Our corn pudding is ready to serve and I know the guests are gonna love this. Now it's time to get started on my watermelon salad. This watermelon salad is so perfect for this barbecue because watermelon's in season, it's sweet, it's juicy, and it reminds me of childhood when I used to have watermelon every summer. Also, this recipe is important to me because, you know, watermelon sometimes can be pretty controversial for black people. We can feel uncomfortable sometimes having it because of the history associated with it. So with this recipe, I really wanted to sort of say, we can reclaim it. We can feel comfortable having it again, and I hope that it brings a more positive light towards this food. The first step to making my watermelon salad is pickling some onions, and this is gonna give that nice tart flavor. People have no idea how easy it is to pickle onions at home, and I'm gonna show you. So I've got some water. I'm gonna add this to my little pot here, some white vinegar, some sugar, and some salt. And then I'm gonna crank on our heat here. And we're gonna let this get to about medium high heat. We wanna really let that sugar dissolve and then it's gonna be ready for pickling our onions. Our sugar has dissolved. I'm just gonna pop a garlic clove in here for some additional flavor. And then I'm gonna pour this right over our onions. Yes, 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 yes. I'm gonna cover this up. And now this is gonna go in the fridge for about two hours. Now we're gonna make our chipotle dressing. This recipe starts with our shallots. I'm going to add some oil. We wanna get our shallots sizzling in this medium heat so we can get them nice and tender. All right, these look good to go. I'm gonna add these into our blender. Now I'm gonna add in some lime juice some red wine vinegar, got a little honey too. Dijon mustard, some chipotle, I'm gonna add this right on in. Nice kick of flavor, we love that. And then finally, I've got some salt and pepper. Okay. Look at that beautiful color. You can tell when the dressing is done because it's nice and smooth. You see that chipotle has blended in and it's thickened up a bit. And this is gonna be absolutely perfect on our watermelon salad, y'all. I've got my watermelon here and I'm gonna start breaking this down. You wanna make sure you have a super sharp knife. And then also, under my cutting board, I've got a little surprise here. I've got some wet paper towel right up under it to make sure that this doesn't slip and slide. It's gonna make sure that this stays in place. To begin, I'm gonna cut off the ends of my watermelon. And then I also like to cut straight down the middle. This makes it easier when you're dealing with a much larger watermelon. You can break it down much quicker. Oh yeah, look at that. I like to get it to a stable position as quickly as possible because it's much easier to maneuver and then it's not gonna roll around a lot. We want to start to take off the sides. So we're gonna remove the rind and you can actually start to do this based on just looking at the top and seeing where it guides you. And as you remove that, just put it right into your discard ball. We're gonna get off as much of this as possible and then we're gonna go right back around once we're done and then just clean up and get off anything that we didn't before. And then once you have all of those edges and it's pretty bright and red, this is where we're gonna actually start to cut it into strips. We're making a salad, so I'm gonna go for bigger pieces. And I'm gonna take these ones in the center and then we're gonna break these down into cubes. I'm gonna cut again into wedges. and then I'm gonna cut right across again. And there you go. Now it's time to assemble our salad. 
I've got our cubed watermelon here and I'm just gonna add this into a big bowl. I'm gonna also add in some cucumber. I've got some heirloom tomatoes, which are quite special. The seeds are passed down from farmers every single season, so it's a special sort of hybrid there. Going to mix all of this together. And now I'm gonna add in some greens. I've got some mint, some arugula, and some basil. Sprinkle all of that in. Just kind of mix that in as well. And this is such a beautiful, colorful salad. All right. Now we're gonna add in that dressing we made earlier. Then I'm gonna do a big toss and get all of these ingredients to just really kind of soak in that dressing. What works so great about this salad is you're just going to get so many different flavor profiles. Like that sweetness from the watermelon is just going to complement that chipotle spice with, that you get from the dressings. It's really sort of well balanced because of all of those flavors. Now I'm gonna transfer this to our pretty bowl. Perfect. And then I'm gonna just dress this up with our pickled onion. I'm just gonna place a few right on top. So gorgeous. And then add a little of our feta cheese. And this is gonna be a hit, y'all. This is ready to serve. If you've ever been to basically any party or barbecue, you know you gotta have a good punch and this one is great. So I've got some water here that's boiling and we're gonna use this to create a simple syrup for this recipe. And simple syrups are usually just water and sugar and then you can add in whatever you want so you can really sort of bring in some additional flavor and that's what we're gonna do here. So I'm adding in our sugar to our water and we're gonna get that to boiling temperature. And then I'm gonna add in some berries, some strawberries, some raspberries. And then finally, because rhubarb is in season right now, I'm going to add some rhubarb. I love to work it in drinks like this and it sort of brings down that sweetness of those berries and it's just so delicious. And finally, I'm gonna add in some mint. I'm just gonna stir all of this to combine and then I'm going to let this come to boiling so I can really let that sugar and all of this sort of dissolve and thicken up. Once it starts to boil, you can see that color developing, that bright red color that is just gonna make that punch just pop, okay, on that barbecue table. It's gonna be so beautiful. This has been going for about 20 minutes and it's perfectly thickened and that syrup is like delicious. And we wanted to make sure that all that sugar dissolved. So now that it's cooled down a bit, I'm gonna go ahead and strain it. This is our berry rhubarb syrup and we're ready to assemble our punch. I'm gonna take my syrup here and add this right into my pitcher. I've also got some ginger ale. And I've got a little vodka here too. Gotta have a little fun. This is mama's drink right here. <laughs> All right, and then I'm gonna add in some berries as well. This is gonna be just like a nice garnish. And then do a nice little stir here to combine everything. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Pour a little into this glass. You can see that gorgeous color. Those berries fly in. Look how beautiful this is. I cannot wait to serve this to our guests. And I'm actually gonna take some of this same punch and I'm gonna turn them into popsicles. Who doesn't love a popsicle? during the summer, so I know they're gonna absolutely fall in love with this whole idea. I've showed you how to make most of our menu items and I've got a few more tricks up my sleeve. I'm gonna be serving a peach salad and also a family favorite potato salad. It's almost party time, guys. Next, when we come back, we are heading out to the grill.
It's the day of the barbecue, y'all. I am so excited. It's a beautiful sunny day and I cannot wait for my guests to see the spread. First two guests are Mercedes and Kelly. I work with both of these ladies and they are like sisters to me, so I had to invite them to my barbecue. My next two guests are Lola and Amy. Lola was my college roommate and Amy, she's a newer friend I met through blogging. Chanel, we met each other working together ages ago and Ariana, she's my sorority sister. <laughs> My last guest, well, you can't have a barbecue without inviting your mama, okay? So she definitely had to come. So good to see you. Anyone ready to eat? Oh, yeah. 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 Let's make our way to the table. <laughs> this is my watermelon salad that's in my cookbook, Everyday Grand. Enjoy. I love it. This is the main event. My simple ribs, even though they don't take a lot of effort, they taste amazing, y'all. You will love them. All right, ladies, cheers. 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 Yeah. Enjoy, dig in. So what do you guys think of the potato salad? Yeah, so this is really good. Really good. Mm. Delicious. Yeah. Look. Mama approves, that's it. If I say it's good, it's good. Let me tell you how long we worked on that recipe. Oh, there is a story with that, okay? We tested it over and over and over, I think maybe at least 20 times. At least. What? And my mom and dad, they were like, nope, needs this, nope, needs more of this. So before it went into the book, they were still nervous about it. I was right, like, it's going into were. the book. Yeah. Right. But it's Regardless. gonna hit, everyone has loved it. Great. Like, you did your thing, Josh. Yeah. Okay, it's time for some games. Okay, this first one we're gonna play, it's called Celebrity in a Bag. You got all these little names in here, and these are different celebrities, and you can ask all of us yes or no questions so you can guess who the celebrity is that you have. Oh. 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 Is it a girl? Yes. yes. Okay, is it an actor? Yes. yes. Does she have a Grammy? Yes. Yes. yes, and he got Emmy, Grammy, oh, Oscar, oh, Tony. Oh, cool, I did not know that. <laughs> is what that meant. Is it Jennifer Hudson? Yeah! yeah. 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 Thank you. All right, guys, we've got popsicles. Woo. We've got a berry rhubarb, a peach sweet tea, and pink Woo. lemonade. Delicious. Cheers. I cannot thank you enough for coming and enjoying my good food yeah. and enjoying the company. It ain't over yet, because we are going to get on the dance floor. <laughs> Let's bust the move. All right. Okay.
Feeling inspired to throw your own summer barbecue? Scan the QR code for my recipes, featured products, and more. Just so you know, today may get a commission for purchases made through the QR code or links on our website. Time for a special Make Ahead Monday. If you're firing up the grill today, we have some creative and delicious ways to use all of your leftovers. You see them, you know them, you love them. Here to help us is chef and owner of Pig Beach in Brooklyn, Matt Abdu. Matt, welcome yes, to you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for having me. We're let's, super excited today. Let's dig in. All right, we're first starting <laughs> off with some hot dog hash. Yes. We've got all these leftovers. You don't know what to do with them. We're going to do a little fun and unique twist on it all. Take your leftover hot dogs. Okay. We're going to slice them really thin, sear them up. In a pan, we're gonna start with some chopped Good. or cut up potatoes. Easy Put them right enough. on in. Yep. This couldn't be easier. Yeah. So potatoes go in the pan, onions, pepper, some garlic, all just goes right on in. Okay. You're gonna cover it, cook it for about 10 minutes. Will Al Roker sneak into your house and eat your food while, uh, you, while you cook? Only if you're lucky. Okay. Oh my God, it will be the greatest <laughs> things ever. So you're gonna okay. cover this, let yeah. this cook, uh, season with a little bit of salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. Until the potatoes are nice and tender, they're gonna to start to take on a little bit of color. Did you just make this up? I've never heard of this. I, you know what? I, it was kind of inspired by that Peruvian dish. It was like hot dogs and French fries, mm, but it was like, what way I can you do? Yes. I wanted to do like a breakfast, lunch, dinner kind I of thing it. with all these leftovers. Love it. So the potatoes are gonna cook with the onions, and you have all these leftover hot dogs, sliced about a quarter of an inch thick, okay. browned up like you're doing fried bologna. Okay. Toss all mm. those in with some sliced scallions to sort of finish and garnish. And just get a good old this. mix. So this is our all-purpose barbecue seasoning. I've made this a few times before for you guys. Okay. It's just a, a great thing to use as a seasoner for the hash or for your ribs or for burgers, chicken, whatever you want to do. What's in it? And we got some cumin, granulated garlic, granulated onion, hatch chili, salt, pepper, garlic, paprika, and some thyme. Ooh. Ooh. I need all those. That is delicious. We do. Pigbeach.com. Oh, Am I allowed to say that? Pigbeach.com. And is then we're just going to season it's the top of it with delicious. a little bit of sprinkle of that all purpose barbecue seasoning. Okay. And breakfast is on the table with some leftover hot dogs. This is an A plus. Good. All right. Rock and roll. All right. So we got some leftover burgers. Yes, sir. What can we do? All right. We're going to take them. We're going to crumble them all up as you have them seen in this pan here. Mm -hmm. This is roughly about uh, five hamburgers or so. And then we're going to take the peppers, cut off the tops, right. and some onions and some uh, garlic. And you're just going to saute them all until they're nice and soft and translucent. It. You're mm. gonna dump that in the bowl. Yeah. Uh, some bulgur wheat. We have bulgur Ooh. wheat that's mm -hmm. been just soaked, strained. That's gonna go in the bowl. So that's kind of your binder. Yeah. And this is kind of inspired from a dish I grew up eating called kusa. My father used to make it for me all the time. Yeah, Dad. Kusa in a yeah. soft pepper form. Uh, we're gonna add some cumin, some zaatar, some salt, some pepper, mm. Mm. and we have some uh, basil and mint. We're gonna mix all that in there, and then for a little, yeah, give it a good old stir, stir for me. And uh, you kind of have a little cheese and ah. stuffed pepper. So we're gonna mm -hmm. put some parmesan in there. Some eggs to work as the binder that's going to kind of hold it all together when mm -hmm. it cooks. And last but not least, a little bit of Greek yogurt. Oh, so the Greek yogurt is going to give it a nice creamy flavor profile. And also mm -hmm. that yogurt goes really well with the meat. Yeah, um, it's not dry. Yeah, it's, well, that's, it's that's the hope. The cheese, the yogurt, the eggs mm -hmm. makes it all really mm -hmm. nice and moist. We're going to stuff it in these peppers. Right. We're going to put a can of fire roasted tomatoes on the bottom of it, oh. which you can get at the grocery yeah, store. Yeah, They're absolutely mm -hmm. delicious. Cover it with foil. Bake for about 45 minutes to an hour until the peppers are tender and the peppers are cooked through. Garnish it with this little uh, mm. tzatziki sort of New York City white sauce, wow. I call it, okay. recipeontoday.com. Mm. No. Check it out. It's absolutely fun, delicious, it's great delicious. way of using up leftover burgers. That I've never fantastic. thought of reusing hamburgers. Well, most in that people way. don't. And why, no. and why would you, right? What a great idea. All right, so moving on, finally, dilly dilly, we got yes. some pasta salad dilly for you, girl. Uh, I'm excited for this. You're growing up some vegetables like me, you're at home for any sort of holiday, you got some leftover grilled mm -hmm. vegetables. There's so many different things you can do with it. What I love during the summertime is making pasta salad. I grew up having this in my fridge mm -hmm. for my mom. Super simple. You have leftover peppers, zucchini, onions, some grilled corn. We're going to take it all. Throw pour this right, right in. into a all pound right. of tricolor uh, pasta or whatever pasta you like. Mm -hmm. We're going to make a really simp simple and easy Italian vinaigrette. Some red wine vinegar, some olive oil, some oregano, uh, salt, pepper, chili flake, a little bit of honey. Gives it a little nice You're sweetness. Good with seasonings. Yes. Well, thank you. It means a world to me. <laughs> that is and then we're just going to add in some tomatoes. Some Perfect. feta cheese. Oh. And, I love the feta and, olive oh, combo. Me too, girl. Oh, man. And then these are kalamatas. You can really use black olives or whatever olive you really like. Perfect. And then we're going to dump onto it that Italian seasoning. Oh, Italian man. vinaigrette. Oh. Give it a nice big old stir. The great thing about this is it'll keep in your refrigerator for the full week. I was going to say, how far yeah. cool. advanced could you, you make? Well, it's better if you make it the night before. That oh way the pasta God. really gets to marinate in that vinaigrette. Is? 
It's good, oh right? Oh, my God. Wow. Simple. This my is... mom, Ma, love it. We used to grow up eating this. My mom would have a whole Tupperware of this in the fridge in the summertime. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Every meal, oh, wow. she'd pull it out, put it on the table with whatever we're eating in the summertime. Mm -hmm. Take this yeah, with you to the beach. So Why not? Oh, yeah. anywhere. Fresh. Warm or cold? It's fresh. Or, it's yeah. light. It's just such a great, uh, simple, easy thing to do with some leftover veggies. Mm. It is time for a media edition of Make Ahead Monday. Mm. And Jordan Andino, mm. chef and owner of Flip Siggy here in New York, is going to show us how to make a pork adobo. How do you, how do you start? Yeah, you know, so that's why. So I have a glove right here just for in terms of time management. But right here you have actually a pork butt or a pork shoulder. So what, what I like about this is that it's a delicious cut of meat, but it just takes some time to braise. It's cheap, it's easy, and it's not that intimidating. Notice it's really big. All you got to do, it's typically boneless and skinless. Okay. So all you, all you got to do is just pretty much cut it up into maybe one and a half, two-inch cubes. It doesn't need to be pretty. You kind of just go at it and just make large cubes so that it just cuts the cooking time down from like three hours to maybe two hours instead. Oh my gosh, So it's super so good. simple. Yeah, you know, you just have the, you know, chunks like this. As you guys can see, it's not, you know, too crazy. Okay. And then once you, once you break down your big piece, you'll have kind of your nice bowl of like already chopped up meat right there. You guys are enjoying it already. So, so what are you adding? See. What are you adding? Yeah, where is all this flavor the coming flavor from? The flavor is coming, like before it starts to braise. Yeah, so, you know, um, all you have to do, it's pretty simple at that point. Once it's cut, um, let's pretend the stove top is right here. We have my pot. All you got to do is add a little bit of oil to, to the base, and this is going to help you saute and caramelize everything and, okay. and garner a lot more flavor from the minced garlic, which I just threw in. And then after that, once the garlic browns, you're going to throw in your pork shoulder that you just cut. So you're just going to put that in and just let that really – kind of brown and just get some and more flavor so and a little bit of caramelization. It's not too hard. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yes. No, it's it perfect. So delicious. Yeah, no, no. And it's, it's, it's supposed to be just delicious and easy. After that, the flavor that you guys are getting comes from a couple of things. It's going to be your oyster sauce, okay. which oh. is like, you know, seafood, oyster flavored yeah. sauce, along with a little bit of sriracha, which is kind of your, mm. you're going to give your hot and sweetness right there. But really what I want to concentrate on the flavors are these three ingredients right here. You have your swan sea soy, and then your dati puti vinegar, and then your mushroom soy Where sauce. Do you get those? My grandmother's gonna kill me. These are her the three combination recipe to make the adobo, and the true Filipinos oh, out there will really appreciate these. Oh, secret is out. These. Yeah, <laughs> that vinegar, secret's out. Yeah. So all you gotta do, mm. yeah, basically all you gotta do is just put, you know, pour all this in there. It's super simple. You just pour it in. It's about like three quarters cup of the swan soy, three quarters cup of the dark mushroom soy. Mm. Those have a lot of sodium in it. So you don't need to add any salt. That's going to give you that awesome flavor. And then that tanginess that you guys are tasting is from this cane sugar vinegar from the Philippines oh, here. Oh, yeah. Where can you buy that? So, you know, there's a couple of, uh, like, you know, we'll call them Asian marts all around, like Queens, Jersey, and um, in the East Village. Um, you know, it's, and also Chinatown. It's hard to find, but once you do find it, these are ingredients that you always want to keep so stocked. Good. Because it's so delicious yeah. and it's a great replacement mm. for just your regular kind of white what? vinegar. Well, it's so good. But you know, Jordan, I'm yeah, enjoying so this over you, rice, but I know you can also, once you're left with all these leftovers, you can turn it into this amazing torta. Yum. Yeah, you're right. You know, so you know, once it's done, you know, you have your beautiful plate like this, which you guys are having, and then you have your torta. So your torta, which you guys have right there, mm. are you know, that's how we get to the leftover Mondays because you make a big Big, you know, batch of this two-pound pork. You got to build a sandwich. So I have this. I have mine right here. All you guys got to see right there is you have your, you know, your toast and then your meat, and it's already made. All you got to do is just start building it. So you have your bottom bun, oh a little bit of mayo, a little bit of hot sauce. But the really, the real concentration here are your pickled onions. So I started mm. with very simple pickled onions. It's just salt, sugar, white vinegar. Boil it, throw in some red onions, and you get that beautiful pink color oh, they're there. So good. Yeah, do you want to add like a really nice tang? Hey, Go real ahead. quick, real quick, yeah, because pork is so hard to cook for some people. And, and I got to say, I'm, I'm Cuban, so like Filipinos, we eat a lot of pork. This is amazing. How do you know when your pork's done? Okay, that's a great question. So I'm going to show you guys what, what that's supposed to look like. So as you guys can see, you, you know because of how tender everything is. So all you got to do is just cook it, oh, cook it, braise it for pretty much like two hours, and then you're gonna get this, and I'll give you a nice little reveal real quick. It should look something like that. Oh, okay. okay. So any of you guys can see apart. it. It just really just falls apart. So here's how you know. All you, you know that everything's ready. You just gotta take your pork, put it on a plate, and then you're gonna see how easy it is. You just take a fork or two and just oh, press it. Wow. There you go. That's why it's so And you're gonna see how quickly it is to pull because that's how you know it's done. Two hours, medium heat, 
And look at that. It just okay. comes apart like that. Jordan, you can we are out of time, but we, and we uh, have happy plates. We, we, we can't have stop eating. Yeah. We've eaten all of our I've food. had sauce all over my face. <laughs> this clean. Thank you so much for joining us. Here to share some delicious Korean cuisine, celebrity chef, entrepreneur, Jet Dela. What's happening, guys? Hi. Chef. So good to be here. So good to uh, have you here. We awesome. love short ribs. Yes, we do. And especially but Korean make short them. ribs. Mm. And I think it's really great for Make Ahead Mondays because mm. it's one of those dishes, it is maximum flavor, minimum ingredients. Can you put garlic in soy yes, sauce? Yes, sir, I will. So garlic, we know, is a uh, pungent. Uh, I'm going to do brown sugar around you right. for a little mm. sweet. And then we'll do sesame oil. Sesame oil. Yeah, and that's going to give you aroma. You go there. Right. And then here Here's the secret ingredient to Korean barbecue, a little sweet. Uh, this also helps break down the toughness of the meat. Um, apple pears. Apple really? pears? Apple really? pears is what you want to do. Yeah. So it has to be an apple, like you, it, know, you can't just use any kind of pear. No, no, you could use any kind of pear, but you know what, this helps break down meat. So things like uh, pineapple and things like papaya juice, that'll yeah. work too. So do you want to marinate that? Yep. I have one ready to go, so we'll swap. I love it you come because you put us to work. <laughs> I do, <laughs> you know, many hands, little work. Ah, so like here we go, uh, marinate four hours to overnight because it's a big piece of meat. Mm -hmm. Dab off all the marinade because the marinade's done its job. Get that sizzling. Uh, yes. Greg, you got this? Yes, sir. I'm all this, over it. Uh, cook to your doneness. 125 is medium rare internal. But that, that becomes that sliced up. I just want to pick up that up. whole bone and it just becomes eat it. That. So oh. good. Look at and that. So now that's Monday. That's Monday. We still have the rest of the week here. And so we have better things to do. Come on so over to Tuesday. Are you ready? I'm ready for Let's Tuesday. Let's pop Tuesday. So are you ready to cook with me? Let's switch. All right, what do you need all to right, do? All right, garlic in a hot pan. Wait, first of all, what are we making? Yeah, so we're going to make a, a Korean chop che noodles. Just think about it as lo mein, okay. like Korean style. Yum. So let's do garlic. Okay. And you can just put just all the veggies in. in all the as veggies. long as the oil is hot and the garlic is ready to go. Carrots, green peppers, and onions. Onions, you got okay. it. Yeah, so uh, all the veggies. And then remember that, that Monday's meat yes. becomes Tuesday's noodles. Yum. So that's going to go. We'll stir that up. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna I should give probably that not you. eat out of it and stir. No, I do that all the time. <laughs> I mean, that's how, you know what I'm saying? So, so um, noodles, mm -hmm. don't freak out. Uh, rice noodles, egg noodles. Can, this could be Any pasta. Kind? I just want you to cook it al dente. Okay. Make sure it's not overcooked because it's got to so still yummy. ride in the pan a little bit. Okay. You want to stir that and up? And I just tried it, and there's, the seasonings are amazing. So what are you putting in it? Oh, you got, again, this is for, for Korean flavors. Yeah. Soy sauce is salt. Okay. Right? Just think about it as salt. Try it, guys. Sesame it oil is aroma. Okay. I don't want a lot. Salt, and just a pinch aroma. of sugar to take the edge off. The so vegetables good. carry a lot of flavor. Look how healthy that Look is. Look at this. Mm. You know, that's where you meat is on the side. First day meat was in the middle. I like to serve it warm, but you know, it makes a phenomenal pasta so salad. Good. It's a really but, nice you know cold what I mean? salad. Just yeah. remember, the secret though there is uh, don't overcook those noodles. Okay. okay. Yeah, make sure those noodles are super al dente, even pasta. Now, fried rice. Fried rice. I've always wanted to, to learn to make fried rice the, at home. I'm going to tell you the absolute secret to fried rice. Okay. Whisk those eggs. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put aromatics. We've done this before. You've seen it once before, okay. all the veggies. But the real secret, guys, to making fried rice without using a lot of oil, put those eggs in if right. you don't mind, right doing. Okay. And I'm going to show you. Don't let them cook all the way. When the eggs are wet, uh -huh. you're going to put the really? rice right yeah. into wet eggs. 
because ma egg has this magic ability to coat the rice because wow. it's got protein in okay. it. It's got a little natural fat in it. Watch. Look at the bottom of the pan. It doesn't stick. Wow. So it's egg, and once this comes up, uh -huh. I'll season. You stir, and yeah, I season. Okay. That's next Oyster one. sauce. Oh you Oyster yeah. sauce. Okay. Soy sauce. I've got the meat and the, remember the Korean barbecue short ribs? Yes. And the vegetables. Once the oh, egg look cooks up, looks what it, look what it becomes. This is amazing. I'll do some this here. This I'll do some And you know here. what it is? It's full of flavor and not salt. Like it just, That's it tastes, exactly. you know what I mean? It's good Asian foods shouldn't be salt bombs, right? This we should be balancing out vegetables, mm. sweetness, five flavors. Hot, sour, salty, sweet, I'm savory. And hot, sour, That's salty, amazing. sweet, savory, big veggies. That's how mm. you do it. So I love rotisserie chicken. I feel like it's the ultimate ultimate shortcut. It's packed with protein and obviously you can enjoy it as a standalone with vegetables, but I'm going to show you two ways to sort of take it to the next level. So you would slice the top, you take back the skin and you take those breasts and using your hands, you're just going to shred them so you get lots of small little pieces. Okay. And one rotisserie chicken will yield about three cups of that chicken breast. Mm -hmm. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make, you can see these over here, we're going to make mm, Asian style chicken lettuce wraps. And I'm going to bring you over to my stove and we're going to get cooking. Okay. So oh, here yeah, I, I like have, camera this is, <laughs> this is um, one onion that was finely diced and then I just sauteed it about five minutes mm -hmm. and the party starts. I add in some hoisin sauce, okay. a little bit of reduced sodium soy sauce. Mm -hmm. This is rice wine vinegar. These are just, you could see these powders, garlic powder and ginger, ginger powder. You can use fresh, but I want to make this super simple yes. and it comes together lickety split. And you can get this that hoisin is, sauce at Asian markets. I wondered about that. Yes. Can you eat with pho all you the can, time? You can, you can get it at any grocery store. Is it common now? Okay. Hoisin yeah. sauce is everywhere. Yes. Okay. Cause I didn't know. Everywhere. It's everywhere. And what I just added, you see, this is chopped water chestnuts. Ah. It's part of the tuber vegetable family mm -hmm. and it adds like that crisp crunch. crunch. Right. It's mm. so delicious and it's very, very light. Okay. Scallions, if you're like me and you absolutely love onion and a little cashews or peanuts. Yeah. Right. So and you're you going to leave those out if you're allergic. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And you mix this up and now yeah. we're ready for our chicken. So this is how much chicken I got oh, wow. from that rotisserie, three cups. And you just mix this whole thing together and you let it simmer for about 10, 15 minutes until yeah. everything's hot. And I'm going to bring you back over to the island. Okay. Come on oh, over nice. here. It's so dinner. easy. I like how yeah. it's always in one skillet. That makes it so much easier. Yeah. Yes. And, and they're mm. low carb, they're packed with protein, mm, and guys, right. you could gobble down so many of these, and you'll feel yes. like you're in your favorite Asian restaurant. And you got barbecue yeah. sliders. Ooh, sliders are Okay, good. these are saucy and scrumptious. I'm bringing <laughs> you back over to my stove now. Okay. This is so funny. Let me clear this. Okay. Okay, don't judge me on my messiness. Are you no, kidding me? That's like an <laughs> always ready <laughs> set that you, you live in. You don't have our <laughs> food <laughs> prep staff like Katie Steele oh doing God. stuff. You're so right. So over here, what I'm doing is, this is going to be um, red wine vinegar. We're going in a totally different flavor direction. Yeah. Now we have soy sauce. Right. This is a can of no salt added tomato sauce. Um, this mm. is the spirit of sloppy joes. I guess we could call yeah. these sloppy joys. Oh, and this is a, like <laughs> a little bit of, uh, that was tomato paste to really bolden up the flavor, mm -hmm. salt and pepper. And guys, as the signature sloppy joe would have it, mm. I'm adding a little bit of yellow mustard. Oh, I didn't know. That's yeah. unexpected. Yeah. Mix it up, mm. and now we have our chicken again. Here we go. Boom. Chicken goes in, and you mix this up. I'm going to bring you back over to my island. Come okay. on, guys. I love this. I feel okay. like we're in her house with her. I know. <laughs> and there you have it. Yum. How Joy, much do I want to feed you right now? So I wish I, know, I could give you a bite. That's, oh. a great, that's a great lunch for anybody. Yeah. Joy Blower, Yum. Bauer, thanks so much. Always Thank good you, to Joy. see you. And for these... Yeah, I love that. For these... Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that looks good. For these <laughs> recipes yummy. and more, head to today.com slash food. <laughs>
Our <laughs> next guest. She was trying guest, to make it look like she wasn't chewing. She's talking with her mouth full. Uh, our next guest putting a Texas twist on dinner this week. Here to cook up some delicious pork. Chef, owner of Jamali in Fort Worth, Tim Lomp. You've, been, you've been to the show like two dozen times, so you're an old pro at this. But this new restaurant named after your twin daughters? That's right. Jamali. It's my new Italian place that just opened in Fort Worth. All right. Having Hello. a lot of fun. So make ahead Monday, and it is Monday. <laughs> so we'll make ahead some stuff. <laughs> You know, I mean, this no, is really, <laughs> this is really genuinely deep stuff. <laughs> so, uh, this is actually a dish that my wife likes to cook all the time. Oh, so it's pork okay. shoulder that we have in here, bone and pork shoulder. Okay. Uh, make a nice spice rub, rub it really well. This is my pork rub that I, I sell, but you can just find a good barbecue rub. What's in your, oh, wow. what's Season in your rub? It's guajillo chilies, fresh rosemary, thyme, salt, wow. pepper, cumin. It's really delicious. Okay. And then we add some poblano chilies that are just raw. Okay. Right. Same with the onion, chopped white onion. Then we're adding a can of chipotle chilies because we like to have it hot and spicy. We do like it hot and spicy. And then a little bit of water. We cover it. It takes six hours. And that's it. You that's can it. walk away. So and then when it's ready, it comes out like this. I've also made some potatoes that we boil. Then we smash them and then grill them on a plancha. Really? Really quickly, simple, what really delicious. What do you call, you call them? Those potatoes? Plancha potatoes. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. All right, let's move you. Don't stop here. We got. So the next me. dish that we're gonna make. This. And you said so you got she the leftover. Pork. She already said so you got the leftover pork. John, can I tell you something? Tell me something. Dylan, tell him what you just said in my ear. This is the best thing I've ever had. <laughs> this, this quesadilla is amazing. It should be on that show. The best thing I ever ate. So let's okay. explain what you're doing. So let's do it. So here we got a saute pan. I've got some. Uh, Bell peppers, we're going to add in here like this. It's fresh. Some chopped onions, yeah. yeah really See, you know, vegetables are like people, right? They come in different sizes, they come in different flavors, they come in different personalities. And you want to make sure that when you saute the vegetables, that uh -huh. you give it time to develop. Meaning, we don't want them to be raw, but we, want to, we don't want to cook them all the way because we want the crunch of the vegetable that's why, left. Is that why it tastes so fresh? That's right. So then oh, we so take a tortilla. It. Okay. Let's spread some goat cheese on here like this. Goat cheese. That's and now you're going to take is. the beans and spread oh, it on this side. Eating goat cheese. And then you puree the beans? <laughs> puree the beans, spread on this side. I've this never, side. I, I'm a horrible. I know. It's, it's hard to develop 50-50, but it's like... Puree with goat cheese. Then we That's put, why it's so good. We put the There's mixture on like this. Okay. And then we're going to fold it in half. Look, guys. After... You Did I do too cheese. many beans? No, you could actually you make have these. Cheese. I know, that's what I'm saying. It's Hold life changing. It oh, you're right about that. And press it down. Now, and then just swap it take the there? brush and oh, brush it with a little bit of yeah. canola oil. Like so. Now you can do this outside, okay? Okay. If you're at the house, you can do it on the grill. Now put it okay, right on the grill. Okay, play like I did that perfectly. You obviously did it well, perfectly. Well, you put the right on the side so, down. The, yeah, so you put it. Oh, man, and you know, it's going to look great. <laughs> Don't worry about me. You just do you. That's the most cooking you I've ever seen her do in two years. That's the, best, that's the most cooking I've ever seen her do on the show, by yeah. the way. Now let me go back <laughs> to shooting. Yes. Back to eating. Really well. Tony, it yeah. finishes, and you want to put a little bit of the creamy jalapeno sauce. Oh, all the jalapeno flavor. Okay, we only have a minute left, but we've got ramen noodles to make now. Okay, ramen noodles. So here, same pork, right? Yep. We whip this egg. We okay. add a little salt and pepper because we're gonna we're gonna dice this egg up later. So we okay. add it in here. Let the egg cook all the way through. So we're gonna roll that around. Okay. A little oil. Don't there. worry about it. It'll just keep cooking. Okay. Then we take the pork shoulder mm -hmm. and we drop it in this dressing like this. This What's has in that? green onions, garlic, a little bit of soy sauce, and we mm. let it sit for five minutes. Perfect. Then we take ramen noodles, the cheap ramen noodles that you buy at the store, right? Nice. Cook them. Don't worry about the seasoning. Take the noodles, put them here like this okay. after they're cool. We got some bean sprouts. We got some sake. Mm -hmm. We got some rice wine vinegar. Mm. We got some nori. Wow, right here. all those Asian flavors. And then you take flavors. your egg and you oh, slice you it up after it's cooked. Okay. And it gets like this. You top that on top. And then you take your pork that's been sitting in the juice. Mm. You mix it up. Okay. You act like a great oh, American hero. Good. And, and then it you totally eat it. changes How the flavor it? of everything. This is delicious. It's nice. So three Thank different ways. Make it Monday. Thank you so much for these recipes and more. Log on to today.com. So good. Yeah.
weather's warming up, the last thing you want to do is to spend hours inside cooking. That's no fun. Katie Lee Beagle, co-host of Food Networks. The Kitchen has a simple sheet pan recipe. It got more than a million what? views when she first posted yes. it. Is this a viral recipe? Wow. I mean, people love salmon, it turns out. True. And they love sheet pan recipes. It All you have to do, chop up some broccoli and some sweet potatoes. You want your sweet potatoes to be in cubes. And your broccoli can be, you know, a little bit on the medium side. Sure. Because you want everything to cook at the same time oh. on the sheet pan. Okay. Uh -huh. So instead of buying fillets of salmon, we're going to just do one big piece. And do you so ask them at the, at the supermarket to de-skin it? For this recipe, I do. Most of the time, I cook salmon with, with the, the skin, skin on. on. But for this one, because you'll see we're going to add a sauce to it, I like it skinless. Okay. So I'm going to add a little bit of oil to our Super veg. Simple. Yep. And some salt and pepper. Salt and and all I did was in there. Yep. And pepper that salmon up for me. Ooh, fun. So that's all we're doing to it. And then we're going to make our sauce because this is a honey mustard. Ooh. I I didn't even tell you all what we were making. Honey, <laughs> honey mustard, oh, salmon, yum. with sweet potatoes, and broccoli. Oh, so I've got gosh. equal parts of honey, and I like to use a, a like coarse a mustard. Poupon. Yes, nice, yes. <laughs> Very oh, good. Sense. Speaking yeah. of the Paris test, right? You're getting yeah, ready totally. for your travels. <laughs> exactly. And then mix it together. This goes right on top of the salmon. I mean, so simple. And some of it's going to run off, and that's okay, because we're going to mix that with our veggies. So Willie, take those veggies mm -hmm. and okay. scatter them scatter. all around. Can I touch them with the yeah. Oh, yeah, nowadays. For it. You washed your hands. Yeah. yeah. I washed earlier. All right, so that's going to go into the oven. Oh, and I put parchment paper on because that makes our cleanup a lot easier. That's Remove. smart. Oh, that's yes. Very smart. Yes, yeah. then you're barely, you won't have to use Scrape any it. elbow grease. Yeah. yeah. All right, so put that in the oven, 425 degrees. It comes out like this. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's very easy. We love it. How Irish long, how long for 425? Too. About 25, 30 minutes. Now, if you want to do this in fillets, cook your broccoli and sweet potatoes for about 10, 15 minutes first, then add your salmon fillets and cook it the rest of the way. Okay. Because it'll be a different cook time. All right, so you want to have some leftovers for lunch. So yes, that we salmon, do. we're going to make a little salmon salad here with a lemon caper vinaigrette. Oh, I love caper so Me much. Too. Yes, Me so too. we've got our Price lemon. Let's put wraps. a little zest in mm. there and some capers and Dijon mustard. Yeah. Mm. Salt and pepper it up. Sure. Little splash of white wine vinegar here. Wow. Whisk it, whisk it, whisk it. And then we're going to come down here to our salad. How beautiful. I've just got bib lettuce. I've got thinly sliced celery in here. I've always got celery in my fridge. Some cucumbers go in. Good cutting, Jenna. You know, you can kind of just good. use what you have. No, that's good. You said that. No, that's real and, uh, good. <laughs> Jenna, you said you don't cook much. You're doing a great no, job. Well, I, I assemble. Assemble. And I okay. chop. Mm -hmm. All right. We got chives. By the way, does your daughter eat cucumbers? Not really. Okay. No, she I can't will. get a vegetable she in She will. Occasionally sweet potatoes, occasionally avocado. Okay. All right, so we're going to add our salmon in here. You just flake it up after it comes out. And you can also use canned salmon for this if you didn't make the recipe. You know, okay. canned salmon's a great thing to have around. If you want to add these veggies to it, you can. If not, have it right on its own. Looks Add beautiful. Add the dressing too. Wow. to it. I've got some down here for you guys. Yeah, we're coming oh, to taste. Thank you very much. Taste. Did you get one though? Have That's... a bite. This Where's is yours? mine. Oh, <laughs> she has the bowl. Like, right out of the bowl. I like large portions of salad. <laughs> I call it my trough salad. I just, you just eat kinda straight out of there, it. Huh? Yeah. off your summer bucket list. We have just the guy to help fill your picnic basket. Matt Abdu is the executive chef and owner of Pig Beach in Brooklyn and soon also to be in Long Island City and Palm right. Beach, Florida this right. fall. Congratulations. Thank you awesome, very much. Matt. we got a lot of exciting things yeah. in the works. We're super excited to be back here though. I know. How We're cool so is that? Back. See you and you're looking fit. Thank you. We're, we're working on all those the good health things, you know, um, but trying to get there. But we got some beach snacks and lunches to bring today, right? I know, so what right? should we do? So you good. say a crunchy chicken wrap well, is I'm the way to go. I'm a fan of chicken salad. I love chicken salad. Yeah, and I know too. it's going to be contentious, but like, I also love grapes in my chicken I'm salad. With you. Some people like it, some I'm people with don't. You. If you don't, don't put them in. It's totally yeah. okay. <laughs> um, but I also love making it with rotisserie chicken because it's like already done, it's already cooked. Who doesn't love rotisserie chicken? It's inexpensive, it's everywhere. So all we're going to do, we're going to really quickly just take some rotisserie chicken, break it down into the breast, the legs, the thighs, and we're just going to chop up the meat. There does not have to be anything sort of fancy. Just 
just chop it up into little chunks or pieces, just yes. like that. Yep. And then for the legs and thighs, just shred the meat. Really, okay. really simple, really, really easy. Okay. Save the bones, because if you want to make soup later with it, you can put some soup, uh, water, carrots, onion, celery, yeah. make a real quick chicken stock. Yeah. Yeah. Chicken broth, sure. You know, and then what we have here is all of How our you chicken your bone? Yeah. Super easy. Next, to cut our grapes, we're going to give this little trick that everyone this loves. This is a hack. This is a great hack. You can use it for cherry tomatoes. Should you can I try use it with it grapes. Are you scared for me? I, I'm not scared for you. What's Go about for it. You can do it. So you put, two, you put the grapes between two? Two, yep. Two deli containers that hold them in place, and then you can just serrate, slice. Jenna, look at you, girl. Look Jenna. at that. Now, I am so impressed. It cut in half. Well and that's done. Smart. Clean cut. I've well never done. seen that. That's, that's yeah. so cool. I, oh, that's a high five right there. That's great really work. You're, gonna, you're sous chef. You're hired. All right, so now in our mixing bowl, we're going to take that rotisserie chicken meat, the whole chicken, everything we have. We're going to put it in our bowl with some plain old mayonnaise. Of course. And then to that, we're going to add just, you know, a handful of grapes or so, sure. whatever we want in there. I got a little hot sauce, whatever your favorite yes. one is. Yeah. Some Dijon yes. mustard. If you don't like Dijon, if it's too spicy for you, you can leave it out. You can even put a little yellow mustard in there if that's what you want. Some freshly chopped parsley. Wow. Fresh lemon juice. I love bright citrus to the chicken salad. It gives it kind of just wakes it up, brings all those flavors nice and together. Some chopped shallots. This can be sliced scallions if you don't have shallots. And again, some crunch. Chicken salad crunch wraps. Yep. We got some smoked pecans to crunch those grapes. I thought you were going to put some chips up in there. Well, we're, wait, we're, we're getting oh, there. We're not and there. last but not least, some chopped celery. So it's pretty much just standard chicken wow, salad that we look love. At that. That's Get a beautiful. little bit of salt and pepper, mix it all together, and then we're going to slide down over here. And we're going to put it into our wraps. Now, these are okay. great. To, any sort of wrap is a great thing to bring to the beach. Yeah. Just because they're self-contained, they're easy to eat. Yes. And once all of our meat gets all mixed together, we're just going to take a good spoonful of it. That's We're beautiful. going to put it right in the center oh, of thank our you, Happy lunch. wrap. I have a spinach wrap here, but if you guys want tomato wraps or whole wheat wraps, this whatever you can find. This looks incredible. But this is, the, this, is the, this is the kicker, guys. We're going to take some kettle cooked oh, potato yeah. chips. Oh, yeah. We're going to crunch them up, put them right on top. And we're just going to wrap them up to give that extra crunchy oh. effect to the wrap. Oh, man. And chicken salad crunch wraps, bring it to the beach, oh, and you're good. So good. And you're good to go. Okay, you pair this with your grandmother's Gra eggplant. This is Grandma Ruth's smoky eggplant puree. It's basically yeah. baba ganoush. It's one of the things that I grew up eating. I absolutely love it. You can make it, put it in a little deli container, put it in the cooler, bring it to the beach, yes. bring some pita chips or potato chips or veggies, dip it in and go nuts. Mm. And any good beach plant, plant has to have a sweet treat at the end. What do we got? And what's better, what's better than a blondie bar? Oh, but these are wait, beach blondie bars. That. Pig beach blondie bars. Let's do one of those, so, Jenna. You think these are pig beach? Uh, you can. We're, they're on the sweets menu at Pig Beach right now. They're just basically a white brownie, guys. But oh, in the middle of it, we have some on. butterscotch chips and white chocolate no, chips in there to really bring it all together. Oh. Matt, they're this is so delicious. They're perfect the Self-contained, okay. easy, no mess. By the way, how do you store these sandwiches so we don't ruin them? So the best way to do it, guys, if we're going to make these sandwiches before you go to the beach, pre-make them without the chips. And then when mm. you're ready, open them back up, put the chips in so the chips don't get soggy or stale. Bring them in the cooler. That way they stay in. nice and crunchy. Amazing. Absolutely. Every bite is great. I'm having this for lunch. To get these recipes, you can head to today dot com slash food. Thank Matt, thanks. Thank you so much, Matt. Congratulations. Oh, on the Empire. Thank you for having me back. Yeah. It's so great to be back in the plaza, everybody. We love it. Oh, this is so it's great. And we are going on a picnic, and I'm bringing a whole lot of delicious stuff, so I hope that you guys are showing up with your We're appetite. Ready. Yes. Oh, okay. Yep. For sure. So, so I like to say... Pasta salad is always yeah. good to bring on a picnic. And everything is better with bruschetta. <laughs> so that we're going to be making a bruschetta pasta salad, and you won't right. be believe how easy it is. So right. here what I've done is I have, according to the package directions, just boiled and drained four cups of pasta. Okay. You don't want to do the whole box because I don't want to dilute the bruschetta. Mm -hmm. And here I have a plum or Roma tomato. You're going to dice about five of these, super small. And you can you see like here. because they're not as, like, Juicy, the juices yes. don't run all the place. They're not as liquidy, but mm -hmm. you can use any tomatoes that you have in your house. You do want to just drain some of the liquid out okay. so that you don't dilute the flavors. So here I have five of them. Okay. I'm going to put this in. So Dylan, why don't you throw in the, that's just going to be red onion. Okay. But tell us diced. about the pasta because it's this not. This is good. So this is a protein pasta. There's, you could do a, be, a bean or lentil-based pasta. There's so mm -hmm. many varieties out there. Oh, okay. But truly, if you want to mm. stick with a regular, that's minced that's garlic. Let's put that in. Minced yes. Garlic. And how great a little bit of healthy. salt, a little bit so of don't pepper. Don't kiss anyone after you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but except that they'll be eating it also. <laughs> that's so true. it sort of neutralizes. Garlic, garlic neutralizes. And this is a little bit of extra virgin olive oil okay. and the signature herb. This is going to be minced basil, and the more the better. So you can mix that up. Okay. Are we and, putting this in too? Oh, and that's. Balsamic vinegar. Okay. Yes, yeah. I'm so sorry. It's really good. This is really good. And though. then you could mix this up, Dylan, and you could put in the option for either shaved Parmesan or 
some of these mm, pearl mozzarella. mozzarella. Yeah. Oh, really? And this is what it looks like. That's and you it. pop it in the fridge and let all those flavors yeah. mingle together. And I'm telling you, even the next day, Tastes it so becomes fresh. better yes. and better. So yes. good. Yeah. And it's light and it's filled with fiber, nutrition, and protein. That's Love actually it. great pasta, too. It is that really good. Good. Yeah, yeah that's a protein pasta. Yes, these, exactly. These vegetables, sometimes, you know, when you cook with vegetables, you get worried they're oh, going to wow. be too bland. How do you marinate them and how do you know when they're ready? So, this is one of my most favorite recent creations. Okay. It is a hearty veggie hero with pesto. Ooh. And so what I start with here, let's let's do the marinade. So okay. this is just apple cider vinegar. And you can also swap in champagne vinegar, okay. um, balsamic vinegar, red wine vinegar. Now I'm putting in Italian seasoning. Okay. Jill, you throw in the salt and the pepper. Okay. And we whisk this up. And while you're whisking it, you're going to pour in some extra virgin olive oil so Thanks it'll emulsify. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, I have my vegetables of choice for this sandwich. We have eggplant, artichoke, zucchini, mm -hmm. red onion. I love you, how you say it. Oh, <laughs> I know. I get excited it, yeah. about the vegetables. It, yeah. Pour it right you, over there, huh? You pour That's it good. right over. You mix this up. You let it marinate. If you have the time for about 30 minutes, okay, then you right. put it out on baking sheets in a single layer, pop it in the oven at 400, and let it oh, roast you for roast about it. Yes, 20 wow. to 25 minutes. Okay. okay. Then you're ready to build. So here we have oh a shareable goodness. sandwich, <laughs> oh and I layer on the roasted, yummy, caramelized eggplant. Mm. So this is also loaded with fiber and wow. nutrition. These are our zucchinis. Oh, I love that there's yummy. red onion in there. I have red pepper. I have artichoke hearts. This is not going I to be like so oh good. Red onion. And then to take it over the top, guys, has about this. What is that? Balsamic glaze. Oh, oh my wow. goodness. And we're not day. done. Some mozzarella. Only if you want. You could keep yes. it vegan if you mm. choose. Oh, wow. yummy. And then last but not yeah. least, it's, there's pesto in the name. So. Pesto is the best. And it yes, oh. right. Bruschetta is better, pesto. and pesto <laughs> is the oh, best. So, and then you put this over the top. You close your sandwich. You slice it up, and guys, nobody oh, will be hungry. Joy, this is joy. Everything Amazing. about the sandwich this is perfect. Great? Yeah, I know. and I don't like veggie sandwiches, but this is. This is like this might be one of the best butter. veggie sandwiches I've ever tasted. Oh, I'm so happy. It over the what's top. your, what's we, your technique to eat it? We <laughs> devoured it. You know what? You just dig in there. Look at this. You put this on top. Oh, wow. Boom! I Sometimes. slice it mm. into about one inch thick slices. I gotta go into. This yeah. is so good. You know what Delicious. I think it is? You roast the veggies. You don't miss meat. Like mm -hmm. some people miss it. Yeah. Mm. Isn't that good? Wow. It's, it's really good. Yeah. So you don't have, miss the meat. You're right. If anybody wants to like cut the carbs, just eat it open face. Yeah. Okay. It's so is easy. Mm. Well, this, this, is is this is why we're so glad you're back. Yeah. Yay. Finally get to eat it, Joy. Thank <laughs> you so much for these recipes and more. Head to today.com slash food. this morning to share some of her favorite summer-inspired recipes. Erin French, chef, owner of the Lost Kitchen restaurant in Freedom, Maine, the star of the Lost Kitchen on Magnolia Network. Uh, to cook these dishes couldn't be easier, folks. Scan the QR code to order all the ingredients with one click. Select add ingredients to cart, then schedule a pickup or delivery. Erin, mm. clearly the table this is, is all... Stop it. Yeah. So delicious. So it's you've it's become really quite the Today Show favorite pretty quickly. <laughs> no. Hey, it's easy with fried
fried chicken. I, I'm that's, because here's the thing, the bar with fried chicken for a lot of folks is pretty high. Mm -hmm. This looks amazing. So walk us through okay. the first step. So the secret to this, so this is a fennel fried chicken, which is just mm. a little bit of a different twist on things. So it starts with the brine, and that's the real secret. Mm. So a brine is just going to add flavor. It's going to keep it juicy. So we just brine this overnight. It's got some fennel seed. It's got some mm. black pepper, some bay leaves, some sugar. And then we cook it in the brine just to sort you of cook it in the brine. You cook it in the brine. You let it sit overnight, and then you cook it. Okay. Just because you don't want to get that raw fried chicken right. when you're kind of moving along here. So it's it's already cooked, so you don't have to freak out. So you've got this all flavorful and ready to go. Right. And then all you have to do is dredge and fry it. So, Craig, if you just want to add in, this is some uh, ground fennel. More you fennel, okay. Whisk it right in. All right. And that'll make it nice and flavorful. And this is just regular flour here? Regular flour. Okay. And then we're going to start to dredge. So. And you use the whole chicken? We use the whole chicken. All so right. you can have your butcher break it down into about eight to ten pieces. And then um, you can just dredge it in the flour and the fennel. A little bit of buttermilk. Buttermilk. So we just keep adding flavors, you can okay. see. And then we go down to this mixture. And this is just ground corn flakes. I just broke them up. That's in it. A, I, knew, I wondered if that's it was oats it. or something. It's so crunchy. Mm. That's oh the secret. God. And it's really cheap. Corn flakes. That's really that's the secret. It. Cheap, cheap corn flakes, a little bit of um, cornstarch, and a little bit of flour, and okay. that's it. So it's nice and dredged, and then we can just drop it right in the fryer. If you don't have a fryer, you can put it in a Dutch oven with 375 degrees. And you make a really good point about not overcrowding the fryer. You never want to overcrowd the fryer because then you're bringing the temperature down. And if you want crispy fried chicken, yeah. you have to keep that temp up. So it comes out. Look at it. It's perfect. It's and so then good. so good. It's so good. So and it's light. This juicy. is the lightest fried chicken. So juicy. And, what and are you then topping that with? I'm just sprinkling some uh, fennel pollen on top the for a little extra is flavor. Like, I mean, that's the kicker. It's so good. And it's so not good. overpowering. Mm -mm. It's like a subtle little flavor throughout. What is it about the fennel, Aaron, that you like so much? I just like that little extra flavor. It's not mm. just plain fried chicken, little fennel, and it yeah. tastes kind of summery. Taste but then you add this other sauce, and this makes it even more delicious. It so does. I love rhubarb. I'm crazy about rhubarb. So rhubarb, a little sugar, a little vinegar, and then we add in some strawberries. Oh so you have a strawberry, rhubarb, it's sweet so and sour that goes with your fried chicken. And that's what you top it with. That's what you top it with. Oh, oh my god. You could also so put it on a shortcake and make it dessert. <laughs> shortcake. <laughs> it tastes so good. And, Edible and, flowers. And to go with your fried chicken? This you, is delightful. you got to finish with a lemonade. Mm. So um, this is just you a Thai talking, basil I'm lemonade. Yeah. Thai basil lemonade. You just make a simple syrup, throw right, in the Thai basil. Too. Get the sauce. I don't get need the, the sauce. sauce. Yeah, but that's what you think until sauce. you taste the sauce. Wait, yeah. what is that base that you just put in there? Thai basil lemonade. That's oh, yeah. what it is. And just top this in, and it's delicious, it's and it's basil. just a little bit different. Yes, mm. basil. Aaron, this is ridiculous. This it's is beyond and, lemonade. And my mother's well. fried chicken is wow. So yeah. this is on the. On Don't the menu at the restaurant? No. <laughs> she's not watching. This is on the menu. This is not on the menu, but maybe it should be on the menu. It should, this be. Is like, it should, should be definitely be on the menu. menu. Wait, basil before, lemonade? Who knew? Before we came on, I said, Aaron, you've got to open another restaurant yeah. in, in New what York City, maybe in Connecticut. <laughs> and what was your response? No way. <laughs> oh, not no way. She said, and why did you, ex I think it's fascinating why you said no way. <laughs> because there's uh, just no way. One restaurant, I feel like, is enough. I well, feel like I have four children right now. requests. A year. About and she's only open for like six price. months. But yeah. what you said kind was, I'm in it for the love, not for the money. Right. So that's yeah. another reason. Well, we can taste really. the love. Yeah. Aaron Finch, thank, thank you. you. Aaron's going to come back in the third hour. Yay. We're going to make the fried chicken all over again. No, I'm kidding. We're going <laughs> to sure. make something else. Uh, by the way, to buy these ingredients and these recipes and more from our sponsor, Walmart, scan the QR Yum. code, or you can do the old fashioned way, today.com slash today table. Just so you know, today earns a commission from our purchases through our links. Fantastic. Oh my gosh. Happy Cheers Sol Solstice. Indeed. Happy, Happy Solstice. Solstice. Cheers, Aaron. Cheers.
got something special cooking this morning, folks. Anthony Porowski, one of the stars of the Emmy award-winning Netflix series Queer Eye. He's also a self-taught cook and a New York Times best-selling author. His latest cookbook is called Let's Do Dinner, and he is sharing one of his Great. recipes for pasta salad. And who mm. doesn't love a good pasta salad? Yes. 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 Hey. Yes. Especially for you after all those steps earlier today. You need, need a carbo carbo load. load. Absolutely. Yeah. So You're starting with zucchini. Yeah, how do you, yes. so you marinate the zucchini? Marinate zucchini. Great way to sneak in those vegetables for those kids. It's green just like the pesto. So what I do is I just cut it really nice and thin. Mm -hmm. You can use a Y peeler, like that you would use for potatoes, just Why? to get the slices really nice or and thin. Or mandolin? Why? Why not? <laughs> or a mandolin would be good, but just watch out for your oh, fingers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, fast track, you got a bunch of them here in a bowl, and now we want to marinate these to kind of soften and mellow them out a little, because okay. they're a little intense and crunchy. So, lemon okay. juice, okay. Mm -hmm. lemon zest, free ingredient that comes with the lemon, never uh -huh. wasted, it's good in wow. anything. Okay. Almost anything, a little bit of olive oh, oil. That's yeah. simple. Some salt. Okay. It's going to release some of the moisture and let this sit for about 20 to 25 minutes. It's okay. so okay. worth it. Okay. And you don't have to wait because you're busy making other things. Okay. So then once the zucchini marinates, let's make. The, are we going to make the pesto? Pesto. Okay. So and Anthony likes a bright pesto. I love a bright pesto. Mm -hmm. Nothing makes me more sad. Well, maybe a couple of things do. Well. Um, <laughs> like if my dog is sick, but then like a brown pesto. So what I like okay. to do is actually, if you put your blender canister in the freezer, the blade will stay cold. Oh. Or you can blanch your basil leaves, but I don't have time for that today. Okay. Mm -hmm. So traditionally, pine nuts, we're using almonds that I roasted. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to put a clove of garlic. You're like going to add more. Deal. You're roasting the, okay, I'm here for Gotta it. Gotta toast your nuts. Okay. Gotta toast them. Olive oil. <laughs> Gotta <laughs> toast them. Some salt. Just don't look at Al, just keep going. <laughs> and then you basically. He did that on purpose. Pulse it a bit. <laughs> okay. If we can Maybe. figure it out. Well, you know, like it. There you there go. You Toast that. Let's pretend that it's perfectly yes, formed. Yes, okay. Yes. And then basil, basil, a little by little. Yep. Why just like that? that. Why a little by little? If you add too much, it's going to overprocess. Uh -huh. Okay. So basically, you're just going to keep on pulsing that, and then you add the parm at the end. <laughs> put it back on. <laughs> okay. Yum, yum. And then All we right. have some very salty pasta water here okay. with mm -hmm. some farfalle, like, some little salty like the ocean. Salty like the ocean. Taste mm. it. It's going to flavor everything. I think mm -hmm. I don't put enough salt in my water. I can uh, try always it I... salt it more than you think you would. Okay. A lot of the salt is just going to go and be drained, but you don't want to drain this into the sink. You want to keep some of your pasta water. Okay. So what you do oh, yeah. is I'm you like put this in here. We'll just we'll do one more. Start. Try it. Why not? I'm like, I'm yeah. ready. And so then, then we have our pesto, the pesto, which we plop in. And you should do it while the oh pasta is warm. While it's nice and warm, it's going to help everything melt nicely. Me? And was it, what is it about this kind of pasta that, that makes it? Why would you I not just use love a bow tie because it like kind of pesto is like nice and creamy and it gets in all the nooks and crannies. Mm -hmm. Also chili, uh, oh. chili flakes for a little bit of heat. Oh my gosh! And you can this use is amazing. you can use whole wheat pasta. You can use brown rice pasta to make sure which to rinse will it. Will it taste this good? Starchy. It will. And this can actually sit in the fridge nicely. You can bring this to like a nice little barbecue. Oh my god! This is good. This is good. Me alone, I would put that on a salad, like totally. the marinated zucchini. Marinated zucchini on its own with a little bit of oh parm and fresh pepper is a great, nice little mm. plant-based app that you can mm. do. Why did you, you use the almonds instead of the pine nuts, just out of curiosity? They're less expensive. I love almonds. Get them at Costco, keep them in the freezer. And I feel like everyone has almonds at home. I'm like here for nuts, walnuts. You can skip the nuts altogether if you want. This is fantastic. It couldn't be easier. Oh, my God. And that zucchini. Isn't that good? Did you try the zucchini? What would, what would be a good... Uh, you, you're, you're a classy guy. What would be a good wine to drink? Ooh. A good wine? Maybe because it's, like, summer, like a nice little, like a Friuli, maybe, mm. or, like, a nice little Pinot Grigio, nice mm. and crisp. Mm -hmm. This is amazing. Next oh. time you bring that, too. Thank you so uh, much. This is, this is great. Thanks oh. for having me. I mean, me. I could Thank do the zucchini all day. Like I just What's the name on. of the book again, Ann? Let's do dinner. Let's do dinner. All right. Good. By the way, uh, there's the book. If you want this recipe, you can go to today.com slash food. As always, we will be right back. Fantastic. This might be my new favorite thing.
it's still hot outside, so I think it's a good time to wrap up our Cool for the Summer series with a refreshing edition of Superfood Friday. Today, nutritionist Joy Bauer has two treats to help you beat the heat. Joy, you are looking lovely this mm -hmm. morning. How are you? Oh, thanks, guys. I am going to woo your taste buds with two recipes that I think scream summer. Ooh. And the first one is a summer cucumber salad mm -hmm. with vibrant fresh herbs. I hope you're going to love this. Very easy to put together. So here I have three cucumbers mm -hmm. and I'm going to show you quickly how I cut them because a lot of people don't know how to get rid of the seeds. And, and for this particular recipe, it's important to do that. Okay. So I'm leaving the skin on for extra texture. So obviously I washed them and patted them dry and I'm going to slice right down the middle, just like this. I'm going to mm -hmm. pick this up to show you two halves. Mm -hmm. Now, most of the liquid is within the seeds. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to use a spoon oh, and I'll scoop those out. seeds oh. right out. Okay, yeah. That's easy. Just, a little cucumber boat. Just yeah. like this. <laughs> it's very easy. Al, I love actually using these as boats and then stuffing them with things Ooh. like chicken salad or shrimp yeah. salad. There it's really go. fun. Oh, that sounds good. So now we're just going to cut them into super thin half moons. Wow. And I would do this for all three of them. I'm going to mm. show you, see what the pieces look like. And the skin is edible. Wow. So just make sure you wash it. You get mm. a little bit of extra fiber. You get a pop of color, but it keeps that firmness. Now I have taken all three of them and I put them, let me see. I'm going to push this over here. I, I, Ian is on the side. We love Ian. <laughs> and so I put them all in a colander and I put the colander on top of a bowl yeah. because it will generate a little bit of liquid. We're going to um, get rid of some of the um, liquid within the pieces of the cucumber and also um, incorporate a little bit of salty goodness. So mm -hmm. I added a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt and we're just going to let this sit for about 15 minutes. Joy, how come you now, don't want any extra liquid in there? Um, because I want the salad to be crisp, okay. and we're gonna we're gonna add in more liquid with the marinade. But I think that what will happen is the liquid from the cucumbers would dilute that uh, bold mm -hmm. flavor. Okay. Yeah. So now um, for the for the other fixins. So I have my bowl over here. Oh, I a have, beautiful um, bowl. This is a, mm. It's gorgeous. Thank you. Oh, I got it as a gift. <laughs> Big Ooh. shout out to my girlfriends, <laughs> my tap hand crew. And so these are thinly sliced red onion, but you can also use a large shallot. So I dump that right in. I'm adding three tablespoons of white. Uh, white wine vinegar, but mm. really you can use apple cider vinegar, champagne vinegar, white balsamic vinegar, all the vinegars work, mm -hmm. and one teaspoon of honey. And mm. I let this sit for 10 minutes, and this is going to give it that delicious, sweet, pickly flavor. Yum. It really brings it together. So we're going to make believe that this has sat for mm -hmm. 10 minutes, and I now take our cucumbers that have been sitting, I add them right in the mix, along with, um, this is a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. I'm only, only using one and a half uh, tablespoons. That's all you need. A little bit of crushed red pepper because I like mm -hmm. the heat. Yeah. And now for the fresh herbs. So this is where it becomes a vibrant party. Normally, I do like to give swaps for dried herbs. But honestly, with this salad, you just really need the fresh herbs. It's and also beautiful. Works. It's really is. Oh, thank you. So this, this is mint, what I put in. Mm -hmm. And now I'm putting in some parsley. But honestly, but any it green, works with any basil, cilantro. Mm -hmm. Any green herb you want. I love dill, too. Mm -hmm. I tend to put a lot of dill in this as well. But this morning, you I'm just doing in the that? mint. <laughs> <laughs> like dill, dill in you want to jump on in here? <laughs> a little bit of crushed. Um, actually, this is just ground black pepper. Mm -hmm. And we're just... Gonna look at this. We're just going to mix this thing wow. up. Let, let, I'm going to show you that you, you see the red onions yeah. really pop it beautifully. I so you see and, that looks absolutely delicious, Joy, but we don't want to miss out on the strawberry lemonade because that looks just as yummy. Oh, oh yes. Okay. <laughs> so we are totally switching directions. Yeah. <laughs> and every summer party needs a frozen strawberry lemonade. Yeah. So 
Um, it, it is ridiculously easy. Here's my beauty. I've been sipping. So all you need to do is you take two heaping cups of frozen strawberries. And I would say frozen strawberries because mm -hmm. this is going to act as your ice. Okay. Okay. Ah. And two cups. And, um, and this version, by the way, is so much lower in sugar and calories, and it's packed with vitamin C compared to traditional versions. Okay. This is a quarter cup of your lemon juice. Mm -hmm. And this is just um, a 12 ounce can of a lemon flavored sparkling water. Oh, so I put that right in. It gives it an extra lemon a little kick. Little fizz. Yeah. Yes, and this is just a tablespoon of honey. Okay. And really, if you want it very tart, you can leave out the honey. Mm -hmm. So I okay. don't want to cause a lot of noise, <laughs> but we would blend this up. But of course, for Al, there's one more thing. I just went and there. grabbed his <laughs> gin bottle. Oh, that's the gin I drink. <laughs> Hendrix so gin, up. baby. That's the one. A little bit <laughs> in there. And in the spirit it's of It's the official research, gin of Black House. <laughs> with vodka, tequila, light rum. Oh, tequila would be good, too. Wow. And so we would whirl this up <laughs> right in the blender, only 20 seconds, because you don't want to over-puree oh, it because right. it will be it will get oh too thin. Gosh, well, Joy, it makes before three we go, huge heaping cups. You'll before get we go, we understand you've this. got some other you've got some other uh, production assistants there. You wanted to bring in your, uh, you your know nieces. What? They, they've all they've all dissipated. Oh. <laughs> Everybody ran around the house. Wow. I just wow. said, guys, it's showtime. Come on down. Yeah, bye bye. They took their drinks. All right, they and missed they their took shot. Off. There we go. Right. We saw but a you know hair. what? Also on on Instagram, I'm also going to um, show how to make the peach version of this mm -hmm. because we were like torn. We didn't know which one we liked better, the okay. strawberry, lemonade, okay, so let's just or see the Ian. Ian. Let's just see Ian. He, here he comes. Here he comes Al, you. you know he Hi, only Ian. does this for you. Come here. That's my man. Oh, yes. That's my man. Oh, so cute. <laughs> Thank you, guys. That's so funny. Okay, Bye -bye. thanks, Joy. And, of course, it's all on today.com slash food. Ooh, the answer's come. The sun is shining and we fired up the grill, y'all. Join me, Jocelyn Delk Adams, for a summer barbecue to remember. As a chef and cookbook author, I love to add a modern twist to classic recipes. With my tips, you can host an outdoor cookout that looks effortless and won't cost a fortune. Bringing all of your loved ones together, it makes the day that much sweeter. Booze, this party's going to be epic. Growing up, I absolutely loved summer barbecues. For me, it just felt like a time to get family and friends together and really just enjoy the weather and each other and some good food. My inspiration for a party comes from a variety of places. I love everything from travel to new restaurants. It all sort of kind of informs all of my ideas and decision making when I'm throwing a party. I guess you could call me an events rebel. I really love to break the rules. And I love that because it's really fun to sort of have something unexpected at your event. The first thing that's most important with creating an event that you absolutely love is starting with the vibe and building it with your personality. If you could bottle my personality, it would probably be like a bright orange color, so that's gonna be all through this event. I love throwing barbecues outside. If you've got a pool, which we happen to have, like why wouldn't you set an entire event around that? You know you are always at a great party when the playlist is hot. So I wanted to focus on creating a playlist that had a lot of fun, energetic songs that made people want to get up and party. I love games at events. Seriously, if we do not have games at my event, it's not one of my events. I love everything from activities that I actually make up. I mean, it's all about making sure that your guests have a good time and games help with that. 
Next, make sure that you stay organized. I am truly type A, y'all, okay? I am a person who lives and breathes by spreadsheets. When I'm thinking about an event, I start with the spreadsheet so I can stay organized, keep my guests in there, keep what I've ordered, keep what I'm serving. Literally every single detail goes in that spreadsheet. For your guest list, it's truly important that you spend a lot of time thinking about who you want seated at your table. I decided to make this party all about the amazing gals in my life. I really wanted it to be this mix of amazing women that I appreciate and who I'm inspired by. And finally, create a unique menu. When I start to think about my menu planning for my barbecue, I really wanna knock my guest socks off. I love to incorporate things that are in season. So a couple recipes I'm thinking about are maybe a watermelon salad. Watermelon is in season right now, so that's gonna be so fresh. Also, corn is in season. So, and I've got this like amazing corn pudding, but the key is the, the corn is grilled. So it's like a nice Nice time to actually use the grill, get some nice char on that corn, and actually give it some nice texture and bite. I think I know exactly how I want this day to flow, so let's get in the kitchen and start getting that menu going. For this barbecue, I selected some of my favorite recipes that I'm gonna show you how to make. First, we're gonna start with my simple ribs. Then we're gonna move on to my elote fried corn pudding from my new cookbook, Everyday Grand, along with my watermelon salad, and then finally, my berry rhubarb punch. We're gonna get started with my simple ribs recipe, and it starts with a dry rub. I've got some Cajun seasoning here. I've got some kosher salt, gotta get some nice salt in there. I've got some mustard powder. And then I've got onion and garlic powder. I'm gonna add both of those in here. Black pepper, some smoked paprika, and I've got some chili powder. Cumin, I love cumin in literally everything. And finally, I've got some brown sugar to add some sweetness. And then we're just gonna do a quick whisk of all of this, combining it. So I started making my own spice rubs at home when I realized how easy it was to do. Like you could literally just go in your pantry, grab all of your favorite ingredients and pull together something that's explosive flavor wise. I happen to like a lot of different flavors in my dry rub because I want a lot of different sensations to happen when you bite into that rib, right? You want that sweet, you want that heat, you want that nuance of flavor. And so all of these different components are gonna pull that off. And once that's combined, we're gonna get that on our ribs. These are beef ribs. And I'm going to grab some oil spray. So I like to use the oil spray. It's a little bit more controlled and it just kind of keeps things a tiny bit cleaner during this process. The oil is going to become an adhesive for our dry rub. And then we're gonna start to add our dry rub right over our ribs. And you can add as much or as little as you want. The purpose of a dry rub is really to get that flavor penetrated into our ribs. And it's gonna take a little time because we're not breaking this down with what you would usually find in a wet rub. I'm gonna flip these over. We're gonna do another spray. And then we're gonna get that dry rub all up in there as well and you really wanna push it into the meat so it really penetrates and you get all of that flavor. My favorite thing about barbecues are definitely the ribs. It's my favorite recipe. It's the quintessential barbecue recipe, right? So I think that all of my side dishes are gonna be the perfect complement to this main dish because this is really hearty, but it's got so much flavor, but everything else is sort of light and refreshing, so it's a perfect complement. All right, these look nice and rubbed down. So I did a quick rinse of my hands and now we're gonna get these ready to go into the fridge. I've got some heavy duty foil because we wanna make sure that every little crevice, everything is covered so we really get that marinade to seep in. I'm gonna go one rack at a time here. Really get it covered. The ribs are wrapped and ready to go. I'm going to add these to my baking sheet, and then I'm gonna pop this in the fridge for about six hours at least, so we can really get that marinade in there. And then we'll be ready to grill. 
All right, our ribs are marinating, and now when we come back, we're gonna get into our sides. ribs are marinating, I'm gonna get started on my elote fried corn pudding. This recipe was inspired by my trip to Mexico City and I wanted to really sort of mix in some of that authentic Mexican flavor with some of my southern roots. The first step is in grilling our corn. I've got some shucked corn here and I'm going to add a little vegetable oil to the outside of it so we can make sure that this doesn't stick to the grates once we're grilling. Now I'm gonna take these out to the grill. I love adding in that char and that bite of grilled corn and it's an amazing way to use it while it's in season too. Now that we've grilled our corn, it's time to get started on our filling. So I'm going to start here with some Mexican crema that's gonna go into our big bowl. This is so rich and creamy, it's gonna add so much flavor. And then I've got some melted butter. We've got four eggs here, and it's best that you crack them outside of the big bowl, so if you get any shell, it doesn't get into your major mixture here. Now I want to zest some lime so I can add in some citrus flavor. It's really gonna brighten this up. Now I've got some sugar. If you've ever had corn pudding in the South, you know it's a little bit sweet, so we gotta add in that sweet. I'm adding in some cornstarch. This is gonna help thicken everything up. And then a few spices to add some additional flavor. I've got some garlic powder, and I've got some cumin. Now this is where I get to add our grilled corn that we took off the cob. You can get that nice bite and that texture from those kernels. This is creamed corn that you can find just right in the can in your grocery store. And it's a very different texture from that grilled corn we made earlier. We're also gonna add in some cotilla cheese. I'm going to mix all of this together, make sure it's nice and combined. Before we add this to our casserole dish, I'm just gonna lightly spray this so we can make sure that it doesn't stick. And then we're just gonna pour all of our corn pudding mixture right into our casserole dish. I'm gonna add some foil to this so we can have a nice even bake and it doesn't brown too much. Now I'm gonna pop this in the oven and we're gonna let this set up and get so nice and beautiful and brown and then we'll be ready to serve. Our corn pudding is out of the oven and let's check it out. Oh my goodness. You can just see all of that grilled corn that's come to the top and this sort of creamy, custardy texture. I like to add some decorations and really take it to another level. I like to add a little bit more of the cotilla cheese. 
And then I also like to strategically place a few little lines here, little line slices. Adds a little color as well. I'm gonna add some cilantro too. And then finally, I'm gonna sprinkle on a little tahini and that little brightness with that chili and lime flavor is just gonna take this up to like a whole nother level. It's so good. Our corn pudding is ready to serve and I know the guests are gonna love this. Now it's time to get started on my watermelon salad. This watermelon salad is so perfect for this barbecue because watermelon's in season, it's sweet, it's juicy, and it reminds me of childhood when I used to have watermelon every summer. Also, this recipe is important to me because, you know, watermelon sometimes can be pretty controversial for black people. We can feel uncomfortable sometimes having it because of the history associated with it. So with this recipe, I really wanted to sort of say, we can reclaim it. We can feel comfortable having it again, and I hope that it brings a more positive light towards this food. The first step to making my watermelon salad is pickling some onions, and this is gonna give that nice tart flavor. People have no idea how easy it is to pickle onions at home, and I'm gonna show you. So I've got some water. I'm gonna add this to my little pot here, some white vinegar, some sugar, and some salt. And then I'm gonna crank on our heat here. And we're gonna let this get to about medium high heat. We wanna really let that sugar dissolve and then it's gonna be ready for pickling our onions. Our sugar has dissolved. I'm just gonna pop a garlic clove in here for some additional flavor. And then I'm gonna pour this right over our onions. Yes, 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 yes. I'm gonna cover this up. And now this is gonna go in the fridge for about two hours. Now we're gonna make our chipotle dressing. This recipe starts with our shallots. I'm going to add some oil. We wanna get our shallots sizzling in this medium heat so we can get them nice and tender. All right, these look good to go. I'm gonna add these into our blender. Now I'm gonna add in some lime juice some red wine vinegar, got a little honey too. Dijon mustard, some chipotle, I'm gonna add this right on in. Nice kick of flavor, we love that. And then finally, I've got some salt and pepper. Okay. Look at that beautiful color. You can tell when the dressing is done because it's nice and smooth. You see that chipotle has blended in and it's thickened up a bit. And this is gonna be absolutely perfect on our watermelon salad, y'all. I've got my watermelon here and I'm gonna start breaking this down. You wanna make sure you have a super sharp knife. And then also, under my cutting board, I've got a little surprise here. I've got some wet paper towel right up under it to make sure that this doesn't slip and slide. It's gonna make sure that this stays in place. To begin, I'm gonna cut off the ends of my watermelon. And then I also like to cut straight down the middle. This makes it easier when you're dealing with a much larger watermelon. You can break it down much quicker. Oh yeah, look at that. I like to get it to a stable position as quickly as possible because it's much easier to maneuver and then it's not gonna roll around a lot. We want to start to take off the sides. So we're gonna remove the rind and you can actually start to do this based on just looking at the top and seeing where it guides you. And as you remove that, just put it right into your discard bowl. We're gonna get off as much of this as possible and then we're gonna go right back around once we're done and then just clean up and get off anything that we didn't before. And then once you have all of those edges and it's pretty bright and red, this is where we're gonna actually start to cut it into strips. We're making a salad, so I'm gonna go for bigger pieces. And I'm gonna take these ones in the center and then we're gonna break these down into cubes. I'm gonna cut again into wedges. and then I'm gonna cut right across again. And there you go. Now it's time to assemble our salad. 
I've got our cubed watermelon here and I'm just gonna add this into a big bowl. I'm gonna also add in some cucumber. I've got some heirloom tomatoes, which are quite special. The seeds are passed down from farmers every single season, so it's a special sort of hybrid there. Going to mix all of this together. And now I'm gonna add in some greens. I've got some mint, some arugula, and some basil. Sprinkle all of that in. Just kind of mix that in as well. And this is such a beautiful, colorful salad. All right. Now we're gonna add in that dressing we made earlier. Then I'm gonna do a big toss and get all of these ingredients to just really kind of soak in that dressing. What works so great about this salad is you're just going to get so many different flavor profiles. Like that sweetness from the watermelon is just going to complement that chipotle spice with, that you get from the dressings. It's really sort of well balanced because of all of those flavors. Now I'm gonna transfer this to our pretty bowl. Perfect. And then I'm gonna just dress this up with our pickled onion. I'm just gonna place a few right on top. So gorgeous. And then add a little of our feta cheese. And this is gonna be a hit, y'all. This is ready to serve. If you've ever been to basically any party or barbecue, you know you gotta have a good punch and this one is great. So I've got some water here that's boiling and we're gonna use this to create a simple syrup for this recipe. And simple syrups are usually just water and sugar and then you can add in whatever you want so you can really sort of bring in some additional flavor and that's what we're gonna do here. So I'm adding in our sugar to our water and we're gonna get that to boiling temperature. And then I'm gonna add in some berries, some strawberries, some raspberries. And then finally, because rhubarb is in season right now, I'm going to add some rhubarb. I love to work it in drinks like this and it sort of brings down that sweetness of those berries and it's just so delicious. And finally, I'm gonna add in some mint. I'm just gonna stir all of this to combine and then I'm going to let this come to boiling so I can really let that sugar and all of this sort of dissolve and thicken up. Once it starts to boil, you can see that color developing, that bright red color that is just gonna make that punch just pop, okay, on that barbecue table. It's gonna be so beautiful. This has been going for about 20 minutes and it's perfectly thickened and that syrup is like delicious. And we wanted to make sure that all that sugar dissolved. So now that it's cooled down a bit, I'm gonna go ahead and strain it. This is our berry rhubarb syrup and we're ready to assemble our punch. I'm gonna take my syrup here and add this right into my pitcher. I've also got some ginger ale. And I've got a little vodka here too. Gotta have a little fun. This is mama's drink right here. <laughs> All right, and then I'm gonna add in some berries as well. This is gonna be just like a nice garnish. And then do a nice little stir here to combine everything. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Pour a little into this glass. You can see that gorgeous color. Those berries fly in. Look how beautiful this is. I cannot wait to serve this to our guests. And I'm actually gonna take some of this same punch and I'm gonna turn them into popsicles. Who doesn't love a popsicle? during the summer, so I know they're gonna absolutely fall in love with this whole idea. I've showed you how to make most of our menu items and I've got a few more tricks up my sleeve. I'm gonna be serving a peach salad and also a family favorite potato salad. It's almost party time, guys. Next, when we come back, we are heading out to the grill.
It's the day of the barbecue, y'all. I am so excited. It's a beautiful sunny day and I cannot wait for my guests to see the spread. First two guests are Mercedes and Kelly. I work with both of these ladies and they are like sisters to me, so I had to invite them to my barbecue. My next two guests are Lola and Amy. Lola was my college roommate and Amy, she's a newer friend I met through blogging. Chanel, we met each other working together ages ago and Ariana, she's my sorority sister. <laughs> My last guest, well, you can't have a barbecue without inviting your mama, okay? So she definitely had to come. So good to see you. Anyone ready to eat? Oh, yeah. 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 Let's make our way to the table. <laughs> this is my watermelon salad that's in my cookbook, Everyday Grand. Enjoy. I love it. This is the main event. My simple ribs, even though they don't take a lot of effort, they taste amazing, y'all. You will love them. All right, ladies, cheers. 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 Yeah. Enjoy, dig in. So what do you guys think of the potato salad? Yeah, so this is really good. Really good. Mm. Delicious. Yeah. Look. Mama approves, that's it. If I say it's good, it's good. Let me tell you how long we worked on that recipe. Oh, there is a story with that, okay? We tested it over and over and over, I think maybe at least 20 times. At least. What? And my mom and dad, they were like, nope, needs this, nope, needs more of this. So before it went into the book, they were still nervous about it. I was right, like, it's going into were. the book. Yeah. Right. But it's Regardless. gonna hit, everyone has loved it. Great. Like, you did your thing, Josh. Yeah. Okay, it's time for some games. Okay, this first one we're gonna play, it's called Celebrity in a Bag. You got all these little names in here, and these are different celebrities, and you can ask all of us yes or no questions so you can guess who the celebrity is that you have. Oh. 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 Is it a girl? Yes. yes. Okay. Is it an actor? Yes. yes. Does she have a Grammy? Yes. Yes. yes, and he got Emmy, Grammy, oh, Oscar, oh, Tony. Oh, cool, I did not know that, <laughs> is what that meant. Is it Jennifer Hudson? Yeah! yeah. 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 Thank you. All right, guys, we've got popsicles. Woo. We've got a berry rhubarb, a peach sweet tea, and pink Woo. lemonade. Delicious. Cheers. I cannot thank you enough for coming and enjoying my good food yeah. and enjoying the company. It ain't over yet, because we are going to get on the dance floor. <laughs> Let's bless the moon. All right. Okay.
Feeling inspired to throw your own summer barbecue? Scan the QR code for my recipes, featured products, and more. Just so you know, today may get a commission for purchases made through the QR code or links on our website. Welcome to The Boost. I'm Craig Melvin in today for Hoda. And in case you haven't heard, July is National Ice Cream Month, which makes total sense since it's one of the hottest months of the year. So we'll be celebrating with some sweet treats later in the show. But first, we're going to meet some cool canine companions. The World's Ugliest Dog is a competition that proves that man's best friend doesn't really have to be the best looking. Gotti Schwartz gives us an inside look at the competition. For 50 doggone years, Petaluma, California has boasted a certain kind of pedigree. Can I have a kiss? It's a lucky town where they crown the world's ugliest dog. They're trying to do the updo. A place where inner beauty is what really counts. Look at how cute and ugly you are. This was my first time as a judge at this year's competition. Do you think you're ugly? <laughs> you do think you're ugly. Fortunately, there is no shortage of pointers from experts in what to look for. When I'm sitting there at the judging sheet, I should put alien, check, hair, coming out of the ears, check. Yeah, teeth going on. Snaggle teeth? And with that, it was time to sniff out the competition from the lovably loose-tongued prince. When you saw his face, yeah. what'd you think? I fell in love, first sight. To the seven-year-old Chinese crested with backward hind legs, aptly named Scooter. Come on, Scooter, let's show the people what they came for. And there was this familiar furry face looking to be top dog. Where's his head? Four-time ugliest dog hopeful Wild Thing, who gives ferocious a whole new meaning. We call him Glugly. You call him Glugly? Glugly. Glug what does Glugly mean? It means glamorous ugly. Ah, glamorous and ugly. That is a perfect description. Finally, with a trip to Studio 1A on the line. He's wearing a tux. It was time for one last look at the repugnant pups. I gotta say, it looks like an alien. And after some big help from the crowd. Wild thing? How about little scooter? <laughs> the decision finally unleashed. The world's ugliest dog is Scooter. Scooter, you're going to New York. <laughs> so much fun and a little something about Scooter. If you get a chance to give him a pat, you will totally understand everything he is about. Mm -hmm. He is this adorable little radiator of heat and love. Aww. And uh, yeah, I mean, he redefines what ugly means. <laughs> He's so sweet. Well, you know who's also just full of love is his owner, Linda Elmquist, who's right here Thank with you. us. Hi, You're so Linda. sweet. I just Thank watching you. you two interact. Like, this is so sweet. This is love. You love this baby. I love him. I know. What makes Scooter so special? Scooter, you know, he has no idea that he has a defect Aww. and he was born that way and he is full of self-confidence. Um, he stands up to the bigger dogs where he could easily get beat up. If yeah. there's a nugget on the floor, he's like, no way. And they back off. You know, go they acquiesce to him because uh, he's full of self-confidence yeah. and he loves everybody. Um, he's you just uh, has a really good heart. Aww. He's a good dog. Now, it was tough competition. I mean, we have a picture <laughs> of you with the winning trophy and your cute puppy, but it wasn't easy. Who was your biggest competition, did you think? Wild Thing. Mm. Uh, Wild, Thing. Wild Thing. Thing. Look at you guys yeah. right there. Which one was Wild Thing? Wild Thing was the, the little Roomba. Like, he was oh, the yeah, hairy. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 A lot of hair versus this one. So, came in second. Take him when, when, the announcement, sure. when the announcement was made, Tell us what it was like for you, Linda. Look at this guy. Oh, my gosh. I have, I was so happy. I was just so happy because I know he will represent really well the undertrodden, the ugly, Aww. the blemished. Mm, no, it's not about it's making, not fun, about of, making right. fun of or laughing at yeah. or um, just taking yeah. advantage of their ugliness. It's about bringing forward all of the beauty. And everyone that would go to the... Marin Fair, yeah. the Sonoma Marin Fair in Petaluma would come away loving these dogs, knowing that they're so Sweet. special. Keeping on the bark beat, Donna Ferris is headed over to Chateau Le Wolf, 
It's a dog cafe in Queens. And Donna got an up close and personal look with some dog owners and their best friends. Feel Good Today is sponsored by Milkbone. More dog. Milkbone. Today's happy hour is at Chateau Le Wolf, and I'm joining woman's best friend. Right, Tina? My name is Jessica, and this is Brody. Tell me a little bit about Brody. He molds to my mood. Like, he knows, like, if I'm having a bad day, he's even more affectionate. He's my best friend. My name is Ariel. My name is Alberto. And this is Maximus and Rigatoni. How have they added to your life? They are like bundles of joy. <laughs> Natasha, you are the owner and creator of Chateau Le Wolf. It is an experience. Tell me about it. It is a place for you to come hang out with your dog and have a good time. And this is Lola. Does Lola know how important she is? Oh, she does. <laughs> People call her the manager. My name is Milo. And this one is Damien, this one's Dexter. Audrey is 13 years old, and that's basically like 70 years old in human years. She's a rescue. How has she changed you? It's been amazing to see her like grow and change and trust, and in turn, it's just helped me be a better person. What is it about this community that is so special, you think? The people. It's all walks of life, ages, young, old, ethnicities, just incredible people that all have one thing in common, the love of dogs. We got engaged here. I brought her here under the premise of a uh, fancy dinner. Dogs allowed, of course. And I was very shocked but I honestly couldn't think of a better place than here because we come here all the time. I come here every day. They have a great coffee, they have a great space for my dogs to socialize with other puppies around the neighborhood. It's amazing. Who is more social, your dogs or you? <laughs> my dogs, definitely. <laughs> Do your dogs sort of help you become more social? Oh yeah, yeah, people approach to me because of my dog. We're gonna play a little game of Would You Rather. When Tina wants to play, would you rather play in the park or with other dogs or just you two alone? I love going to the park mm -hmm. because she can run like crazy, mm -hmm. she can play with other dogs. Mm -hmm. Definitely one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> Lola's a, look at this. <laughs> That's it, it's me and her <laughs> against the world. Would you rather play fetch or frisbee? Oh, we have something to say? What Definitely fetch. I think fetch. She wants to play yes. fetch. Fetch. Just lose his mind. Fetch. He Ooh. loves. Yeah, he loves the tennis ball. It's his favorite thing. Well, Brody, um, since I just heard how much you love fetch, I have a little gift for you. <laughs> Our sponsor, Milkbone, wants to give you a little doggy bag, and then you get a three hundred dollar cash card. <gasps> Amazing. Thank so you thank so you. much. Thank oh my God. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, oh my gosh, thank you, thank you. that is so amazing. <laughs> there you go, buds. That's it, that's it. We're that's done. It.
Welcome back to the Moose. There's a group of dads in the UK who are members of a unique brotherhood. They're supporting each other and spreading joy through dancing. NBC senior chief international correspondent Keir Simmons checked out their moves in person. It all started as a bit of fun back in 2012 in Brighton on Britain's south coast when seven friends, all fathers, decided on a surprise performance at their kids' annual street dance show. Paul Jukes is the crew leader and a founding member. Those of us that were in the crew at that time wanted to make our kids proud. That was ultimately the kind of main goal. Um, so you decided to dance? Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I know, there's probably other ways, right? <laughs> More traditional ways. Their kids loved it, and the Outer Puff Daddy's dance crew took off. Over the years, the group has grown to 15 men, all with regular jobs, from teachers and finance directors to mechanics and chefs, who meet once a week to create content that has become a global sensation. And then the pandemic hit, and my daughter said, Dad, you should get the guys on TikTok, they're gonna, they're gonna kill it. And it just blew up. Now they are viral legends on social media, with nearly 200,000 followers on TikTok. Beyond dancing, this band of brothers has helped boost their own physical and mental health. One of the things about dancing is when you're doing the same thing at the same time, there's a, there's a connection where you kind of sync up as humans and, 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 and doing that, which, you, which gives you something really special. We've built this culture within us that the moment anyone's got any kind of struggles, they just verbalise it and, yeah, it's very, very beautiful like that. They perform at regular events, raising mental health awareness. So ultimately our message is about trying to break the stigma surrounding mental health, in particular men talking, helping others and encouraging others to put a support network around them um, so that when a crisis point happens, they've got the support group there to help them. Has anyone got teenagers? Yeah, yeah, yeah totally, yeah, yeah. <laughs> OK, you can't tell me that teenage boys or girls that they're not just a little bit embarrassed as well as kind of proud of you guys? Well, I've been doing it for 10 years, so I think any embarrassment they had has long since passed. They oh, were probably yeah. embarrassed a little bit at the beginning. They've got over it. But now they, you know, now we're quite popular. I think they think it's kind of cool. Yeah, because it's cool on TikTok. Yeah, yeah. yeah. At their weekly rehearsal, I got the chance to see them in action. Yeah! Wow! <laughs> Yeah, Dad! Go. Yeah, Dad! All right. <laughs> You're an intimidating group, I've got to tell you. I'm standing here feeling a little nervous. All right, let's get you in. Come oh, on. Oh, my goodness. Come on. And then yeah, it was weird. my turn to uh, yeah, hit the yeah. dance floor. Three, four, kick, down, slide forward. Nice! Uh, what happened and there? Again. Was I supposed to turn? Yeah, sorry, straighten up. OK. Like, right. like attention to detail. Already. Yeah, well, I've got a mirror. All right. <laughs> Sorry, kick with the left. Right, three, kick with the four. left. Kick. Oh, sorry. Down, slide forward, straighten up. Nice. <laughs> We're going to build on that. One more try. Three, four. Kick, down, slide forward, kick back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Woo! And now, with music. I got you. Right. Right. Step back. Step back. Right. Cross your body. Just come and back, please. Yeah. yeah. And now this next guy is a TikTok sensation. And while he may not have kids of his own, he has become a proud dad to millions of followers. Lock those elbows out, please. Make sure you're all bracing your core through this movement. When 26-year-old fitness trainer Summer Clayton, who goes by the handle Your Proud Dad on TikTok, first started making how-to videos on social media, he couldn't have imagined that millions of people would one day be calling him dad. But that's exactly what's happened. It's really nice to meet you. How did the whole thing start? It started out in these funny videos. Um, from there, it kind of 
moved into something more altruistic. What's up? Promise coming up, you guys. So I gotta teach you how to tie a tie. After an initial run of how-to videos about hygiene, cooking, and life skills, Summer, who's not a parent in real life, decided to try something entirely new. What if he invited his viewers to enjoy a virtual meal while he played the part of the perfect dad? Anything new? What's one good thing that happened to you today? I'm taking the gumbo. I didn't hear you. You weren't loud enough. <laughs> How have you been? It's very much interaction with the other person on the other side of the screen, asking them how their day was, going through like a little virtual check-in. Look at us, huh? Best friends. The Dinner With Dad videos became an instant success. In each of his videos, he sets a plate of food in front of his own and invites viewers to join him for a wholesome dinner with dad. I love you. And I think I realized right away that uh, there were people who didn't have that sort of interaction from some of the comments that I would see. What would you see? You know, comments like, oh, can you adopt me? I wish you were my dad. My dad doesn't treat me this way. They made comparisons between what they saw in me versus the relationships they saw with their parents. Hey, good morning. And with more than three million followers, the messages and comments keep pouring in. Bree Roberts grew up without a father figure in her life, and she's now one of Summer's loyal followers. I feel like he literally almost looks at all of his followers as if they are his children, and he has our best interests in mind. And it's hard to find genuine people, especially on TikTok. How much of this void that you are filling comes from a void that you had in your life? The relationship I had with my dad, it, it was great at first when I was really, really young. And then somewhere in the middle, uh, it really broke down. See, my dad was more of the disciplinarian, and I think that drove a really big wedge. I felt, man, I, I don't really even want to be around my dad. And so for some years, it was this breakdown, and just I just wanted to separate. And I brought some for my dad. He's from New Orleans. Mom and dad are from Louisiana. So he's going to give it a try. Let's see. Let's see what you think. And although they've had their rocky patches, Summer has been working toward a sense of healing with his parents over the last few years. We were able to have a real frank and honest conversation about it, and they were able to realize some of the things that they did. And we're gonna bring you up, we're going to clothe you, feed you, uh, make sure you have a roof over your head, and that is raising a kid. But there's a lot of other stuff behind right. the scenes, like talking about hard things and make sure they have someone to lean on. And I have older adults who are uh, parents that are soon to be or who are currently parents who will say, man, I, I want to start doing some of these things for my kids, which is really fulfilling to know that they see me that way and not as just some random guy talking to his phone on the internet, you know, with two plates of food. I'm glad you mentioned the two plates of food because I watched some of these videos and I wondered, what happens to the other plate of food? I eat it. I oh, you eat absolutely. both? I do. Mystery solved. Uh, yep. <laughs> Up next, a father who found an amazing way to treat his kids after the break.
Welcome back to The Boost. We've got another sweet story for you. Let's meet the father who came up with a cool idea. He's spreading joy for his children and others thanks to an old ice cream truck. Take a look. You are a bad dad of only me have. I'm the best dad ever that you ever had? Yep. As a father of 10, Joe Wegner was already a busy man when he saw an ice cream truck drive by and was struck by a simple idea. He thought, I could run an ice cream truck business. I started Special Neat Treats in April of 2021. I found a used ice cream truck in Columbus, Indiana. So we purchased the ice cream truck in January. My wife had the, the brilliant idea to name it Special Neat Treats, a play on word of special needs. Joel quickly realized the ice cream truck wouldn't just be a fun job for him, it would also be a great way to give his two children, Mary Kate and Josh, both born with Down syndrome, jobs after they aged out of the school system. When, uh, you know, teachers and people would ask her, you know, what do you want to do when you get, get older? She wanted to work with Papa. Why was it so important for you to create this, this business for them? At every stage with special needs kids, you look toward the future and what's their life going to be like in the next phase. But it also becomes more a responsibility of us as parents to say, what can we do to give them worth and to allow them to add some value to society? That's very important to us as, a, as parents of Mary Kate and Josh. All summer long, special neat treat sold ice cream, but it's not the only thing the trio served up this summer. Was there a moment where you realized this was about more than just selling ice cream? There was a school here that was doing a special program uh, for special needs kids, and they had contacted me and wanted me to bring treats to, uh, to give out to the students there on an afternoon. And a little girl came up and uh, she said, thanks for coming today. You've made my day. <laughs> I didn't cure her autism. I didn't take care of the other issues in her life. But for one day, for one moment, she had a great day. And I realized when I left, this isn't about selling ice cream. We do that. But it's about giving hope. It's about interacting with people and, uh, and just sharing joy. Amen, Joel. You know, we're all called to minister in different ways. and Absolutely. It would seem as if you, you, you've answered your call. In my wildest dreams, I would have never sat around and said, an ice cream truck, that's where I'm going to spend the rest of my life. <laughs> that's, that's how it always is, though, Joel. Like, it's always the unexpected things that, it is. that it bring is. us the that's, greatest joy. That's the greatest joy. You're absolutely right. But I still needed to know, how was the ice cream? And I went straight to the source for this one. What's up, guys? Hello. <laughs> Hi. I, I hear you guys sell the best ice cream in America. That's oh, what I heard. Yes, we did. <laughs> yes, we did. Of course we did. <laughs> of course you did. Well, congratulations <laughs> oh, on, a, uh, on a great business that you've got with Dad there. What are, what are your hopes for Mary-Kate and Josh in the future? As a parent, you, you have desires and yet I don't know that either one of them will ever be totally independent uh, but we hope to uh, you know move them in that direction and I hope they can keep helping me sell ice cream for for a long time so as you know the summer's really heating up and so what better place to cool down than an ice cream shop there's a Ben and Jerry's right here at Rockefeller Center so Hoda and Jenna swung by to test out their scooping skills. All right, you know what, Jenna? It's a hot summer day. It sure is. We're sweltering. You know what we need? What? Ice cream. My favorite is cookies and cream. You can't go wrong with a little Oreo and cream combined. Graham cracker ice cream. It's sick. OK, I think right. we need to go in. Let's do it. Hi. Hey, ladies, welcome. Hi. Are you Xavier? Xavier, yes. Nice to meet nice you. To meet you. I'm, I'm Jenna. I'm Hoda. Hoda. Xavier, we're thrilled to be here. Right. Let's get started. Let's OK. First up, learning how to make a waffle cone. OK, so Xavier, will you walk us through? Yep. So you just. All right, so you take like some of that. Yep, and minute. you just shut it down. That's the it? Black part. Yep, and you just click it, and then it's going to go for Ooh. a minute. 18. Wait, sizzle, sizzle. Yep. Okay. Have you ever met Ben or Jerry? I met Jerry. He actually came to the store. He oh, did? Yep. Cool. Oh my gosh, do you yeah. smell that? <laughs> <laughs> then when the beat is. Now what? Lift, lift it? Lift it. Oh, yep. I'm scared. Now you can. Oh, and now how do you roll that? 
put that here and twist it. Twist it. Yeah, just like oh that. my gosh. Oh. We made and a cone! And now you put it in a little. Paste it in there, let it cool off a little bit. Is that, oh. a good, is that an okay cone? It's a, for it, starters. It'll yeah. do. Yeah. It'll do. All right. Next, Victoria helped us master the art of the scoop. Each mm -hmm. scoop is three ounces. So that's from here to here. Oh, but so you take one it, line. Look. just roll, it rolls oh, itself. Oh, you go like that. That's a perfect roll. <laughs> really? <laughs> no. Sad. I don't think that you would. <laughs> Victoria. We don't squish it that much. Don't squish it. Okay. <laughs> just, I'm going right? to start calling you Hoda. Scoops. <laughs> Copy. Scoops. Finally, it was time to open the doors and serve it up. Welcome. Oh. Can we help you? What would you like? Either butter pecan or vanilla. Okay, vanilla's on this side. Here, would you like a cone or a cup? Vanilla. I'm a cup, please. She'd like a cup, please. And what would you like? A chocolate chip cookie chocolate dough. Chocolate chip cookie dough. Oh, chocolate. Okay, here we go. Thank okay, you. Okay, wait, you're gonna need a spoon. Go. You're just gonna leave the ice cream on you melting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Happy National Ice Cream Month. Hi. Can we help you? How are you? Can I please get the strawberry marshmallow? Strawberry, strawberry marshmallow. marshmallow. Over here. Where? Where? I'm giving you a big Do you want a go. or a little? Scoops like little. little. She wants little. So chocolate chip cookie dough? Yes, please. Yep. Hold on. I mean, look at that scoop. That's, as perfect as it can be. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Have a great day. We're open. Hey, ladies. Which Where are y'all from? Texas. I knew it. Yes. I knew it. Yes. Let's see whose is better. Ready? Have a bite. Mm, delicious. Oh, Mine's sure. better. Oh. <laughs> Wait, okay, what, what do you can want? we get you? Um, can I just get strawberry? Yeah, what would you one. like? I'll okay. have chocolate chip cookie dough. Okay. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. I want to show you what a perfect scoop looks like. Oops. Here, try to look at it. No scoop. I'm trying to. Oh, wait. You guys, thank you for coming. Is this so fun? Thank you. So what awesome to see you doing? guys. You saw our scooping techniques. Uh -huh. We didn't make you one penny. We feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> but how did we do? Is it good? We did? Yes. What well, did first we do? time? Of, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Mm. 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 Oh my God, I'm so happy. Mm. Oh my God, it's so good. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Mm. Stay with us for another fun story after the break. Welcome back to The Boost. We're bringing you one final story that's sure to put a smile on your face. Take a look. It's a young man in California bought a special present for his little brother, Chase. But he was so excited to give it to Chase, he just couldn't wait for his actual birthday. So he gave the gift a little early. And of course, mom captured the unforgettable, unforgettable moment on camera. This is an early birthday gift for you. <laughs> oh. oh, Chase! Uh, inside that box, uh. by the way, it's a guitar. It's a guitar that Chase has wanted for a really long time, and as you can see there, clearly wasn't expecting it. The gesture bringing him to tears. Wow, that's that, beautiful. That's what you call a little brotherly love. And then later, you can actually. Hear mom tell them both. That means no more arguing. 
Thanks so much for joining us today. Make sure you grab yourself a sweet treat this afternoon if you can. And we will see you tomorrow for some more feel-good stories right here on Today All Day. And thanks for joining us on Consumer Confidential. I'm Vicki Wynn with your summer guide to safety and savings. Summer is a great time to soak up the sun and enjoy the outdoors, but there are also some important safety measures to help you and your family stay safe. Barbecue season. Yes. There's a lot of things you have to consider, even just preparing your grill for the summer season. It's wild, Dylan. The National Fire Protection Agency says July is the biggest month for grilling fires. It is a serious danger. It sends four to 5,000 people to the ER every mm -hmm. year. So you just want to be safe. Number one, have a fire extinguisher on hand. You don't think about it. I don't have you, one. Right? Yeah. You should have it right there by the grill because you're literally dealing with an open flame <laughs> and know how to use it. The last time you want to start reading those directions is when like an actual it, it, fire yes, is happening. Exactly. Three foot safety zone around the grill just make sure nothing flammable the patio furniture is pushed away and then cleaning your grill after every use is important and we'll come over here and talk about yes, some of the tools because you can I've use. actually you know, if I look at my grill, there are little metal bristles all over it. So the experts say those metal bristle brushes get rid of them because mm -hmm. the bristles come off and they can get stuck within the food when you're cooking. Scary. There's a viral TikTok going around right mm -hmm. now of an ER it. doctor. Yeah, showing this little boy ate a hamburger oh, and got no. a little bristle stuck in the back oh. of his throat. It took a long time for them to figure, figure out, what, out what, it what it was and it was really hurting him. So mm -hmm. stick with something like this. This is a wooden grill cleaner, mm -hmm. which, you know, you can use. It's got the handle. You want to go low tech, just ball up some foil after the grill is hot. You scrub all the little pieces off. It's also helpful for food safety, right? Because you don't want leftover mm -hmm. bits of food for the next time you're True. eating. You can also use an onion. The acids in the onion help break up really? all of those nasty you grill get all bits. that nasty bit. Yes, exactly. Okay. Great. Uh, Vic, let's talk about yeah. water safety. Those are always, honestly, the most awful stories that we always hear about people who have distressed swimming or drowning. Um, you got some tips. Yeah, Jacob. Actually, according to the CDC, drowning is the leading cause of accidental death among children. The leading cause. And black children, five times more likely to die than white children. So the message here and every single day around water, watch your children around water. Never assume that someone else is watching them. Always assign an adult, a sober person. If you're having a party, consider hiring a lifeguard. The other thing is get those kids into swim lessons, lessons yep. right? They're 88% less likely to drown if they have some swimming and water safety My skills. My daughter's doing it right now. Oh, how old is she? Three. Perfect. Oh, wow. You go to the YMCA, the Red Cross, or your local swim school, get them involved. The other thing is invest in a life jacket over the floaties. So the floaties sort of give people a sense, a false, like a sense, false of sense of security, security. right? That's Let's what the go swim over to was show saying. UV. So this is a better kind of uh, life preserver to have. Exactly. And this one, just so you can see, you can check to make sure it's actually a approved by the U.S. Coast Guard. You see that little label right there? USCG USDG. approved. Exactly. Okay. This is going to keep them in the right position in the water as well. And if you are an adult swimming, always take a buddy or let someone know, hey, I'm going to be out here in the ocean. This is what I'm doing. This is when you can expect me to come back. That way someone's looking out for you. And then the age old advice about if you get caught in a rip current, which can happen. Diagonal swim, right? Swim parallel to the shore. Oh, to the because shore. Because the rip current That's can be as wide as 100 feet. Yeah. Parallel. Diagonal, you'll be struggling. See, look, you learn something new every day. Don't yes. listen to me, listen to her. <laughs> <laughs> and Thank now you, I'm Jacob. fired. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay. Oh, yeah, we're going For here. For people who we're have a here. certain amount of extra exposure, mm -hmm. this is very important. Harry, our skin is the biggest organ on our body. So if you are going out in the sun, avoid the hours of 10 to 4. That's when the sun is most intense. Wear a wide brimmed hat, cover up with clothing. And if you do want to get a little bit of sun, still slather on the SPF. You're looking at a golf ball size or the amount that would fit into a, a shot glass to cover your body. Now, here's the thing. There's so many kinds of SPF, right? Oh. Broad spectrum, UVA, UVB. You want broad spectrum, and that means it's protecting against UVA, A for aging and skin cancer, mm -hmm. and UVB, B for burning. And that's not the technical term, no, but I that's know, how but I remember it. That's a good it. way to think about wow. it. Yes. And don't forget your eyes. Wrap around sunglasses that block 99% of the UV rays. Here's the other thing I want you to remember. Sunscreen is water resistant. It's never waterproof. And you want to look and see, is it 40 minutes? Is it 80 minutes? Set a timer on your phone just to remind yourself to reapply. That's really important. Or just do it several times. Yeah. You don't want to get if burned. If you're in and out of the water. Right, yeah. especially, or if you're sweating, because mm -hmm. that will take the sunscreen off. But you want to remember every sunburn that you get, there is research that shows that increases your risk of getting skin cancer later on in life. Once so I heard that, I felt guilty, because I like the sun look. Yes, you know I, mean? I know, it's we not do. Worth, it's not worth getting sick. No, not All at right, all. All right, last but not least, let's talk about preventing bites. So important. Okay, so you want to use 
use a, an insect repellent that has at least 20% to 30% DEET. There are natural repellents out there. People say, you know, for some people it works, for others you really need the DEET. You can spray it onto your clothing as well as onto your skin. Mm -hmm. And we're not just talking about protecting you from bites from mosquitoes and ticks. Mm -hmm. For the itchy factor, you want to prevent diseases like yeah. West Nile virus, Zika, which is carried by mosquitoes, or Rocky Mountain spotted fever, Lyme disease, mm -hmm. which is carried by ticks. So make sure you use it. And you really have to do self-examination for right. ticks. Check Everywhere. all the nooks and crannies. Just mm -hmm. do. Right? right. No, I said I, that well. The tick experts that is professional advice. Up next, if you are still planning your summer vacation, we have apps that can save you time and money. Plus, thinking about traveling with your pet, what you need to know to make your trip as smooth as possible. That's all ahead on Consumer Confidential. We're back with more Consumer Confidential. Summer is considered to be the busiest travel season. From gas prices to airline tickets, the costs can quickly add up. Check out these travel apps that can help you get the most out of your vacation without breaking the bank. <laughs> okay, so gas, flights, everything's up. Mm -hmm. So uh, what do you recommend if you're planning your trip this, this summer as okay. far as transportation? Let's go with all the apps that are going to help you save the most money. We've all heard of Expedia. They bundle all sorts of things, hotels, car rentals, airfare. So that's a great way to get a savings. Hopper is one that you can look at and they'll give you the best times to buy. But I'm going to tell you from all the interviews we've done, buy as soon as you know where yeah. you want to go. If you don't know where you want to go, skyscanner.com and airfarewatchdog.com. These mm -hmm. are great. You sign up for alerts. You put in the airports that are closest to you. And then one or two times a week, you get an alert. You can go to Vegas for 99 bucks. Right. That might help you determine your next trip. And finally, if price is all that matters to you, yeah. you go to Kayak and you say, this is how much I'm willing to spend. This is how far I'm willing to go. And Kayak will narrow it down for you worldwide and say, hey, these are the destinations to consider. Before we go to the gas thing, yeah. I want to ask you, if you use these, like, third-party apps, right. and you have to try to get a refund, how difficult is it? It can be difficult, very, because you're, especially if you're bundling something together. So what you want to do is use these as a price point starting, and then look at the individual hotels and airlines to see, hey, does it make sense to bundle, or am I better off booking directly, which would be easier to cancel? Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're going to jump in a car and drive. Yes. Gas prices. Okay, so crazy. first, you want to know where the cheapest gas is. So Gas Guru, Google Maps, those are places that will tell you, okay, these are the the best spots to fill up. Mm -hmm. Then once you get to your spot, I want you to really get those gas station apps. They're free to sign up. I was at a BP. It was, you know, a guy across from me said, hey, I'm using this. Look, I'm paying five cents less per gallon than you are. Completely legitimate. Another one is getupside.com. That is an app that you can stack on top of the gas station app and gives you cash back. So all those pennies really add up. Okay, now, if we want to travel, mm -hmm. people, you know, it's old school, the old travel agent. Yeah. 
What, 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 as we're now in the 21st century, what do we do? So here's the thing. Travel agents are wonderful and can get you great deals on those big trips, the trips of a lifetime, or you're going international, or you and I are traveling, so we've got multiple stops, your family, my family. They help you coordinate. If you're just taking a road trip, try Road Trippers. This is a fantastic app. It really helps you to plan an entire trip and tell you how to get off the beaten path, iconic stops, landmarks, and things that you can do. AAA has one called Trip Tick, which they is They used to similar. have a, a, a physical map. Oh, yeah. I you know. Used to, the trip tick. Exactly. And you go and they, they mark it, but now it's digital. Now it's all digital, which is cool. And Al, for bicycling, you can actually plan a bicycling route oh, wow. as well. I mean, you probably aren't going to do like the 400 mile Yellowstone, no. the Grand Tetons, but maybe you want to do something down the coast. This uh -huh. is a great way. Uh -huh. All right. We've all right. got about, what, two minutes left? Let's okay, talk let's about lodging it. really quickly okay. and hotels and what you need They're to know. They're up 30% year over year. So Goodness. hotels are expensive, Chanel. Okay. Bundling is a great way to save, but like Al was saying, it can be tough to unbundle. So you mm -hmm. want to be sure that's where you want to go. Okay. Hoteltonight.com will help you book last minute hotel nights. If you're not, if you don't care about the specific place you're going to go, right, you right. just need a place to stay. That's non-refundable, but you're going to get a great deal. Mm -hmm. And then finally, of course, you've got Airbnb and Verbo, which can offer really great deals, but book as far in advance as you can. I've done all three of these things. Yeah. All right, last but not least, a lot of people like to try international and they're yes. ready to fly internationally. Anything we need to know? Oh, let's talk about the oh, camping Oh, wait, the camping, first. yes. Camping. This is important. Yes, yes. Everybody's camping. So the dirt is very cool. You'll find 44,000 different places really? I've never to heard stay. Of it. There okay. will be photos and user reviews about these campsites. Hip Camp is similar, but Chanel, if you want to camp with llamas or you want to do goat yoga where you the little goats like that jump in. on your back, Hip Camp will help you That's say, fun. you want to forage for mushrooms, they'll help you find those oh, kinds I love of campsites. Yes. Recreation.gov, fantastic site. We have 423 national mm, park okay. sites. Not only will this give you real-time updates that's on where good. the long lines are, if there's road closures, if there's weather, it will also give you maps that you can download. Mm -hmm. So when you're out in remote areas, you don't have cell phone coverage, you you're can still lost. use the maps. That is so good. Yep. Oh, Time Shifter will help you adjust to jet lag. Okay. You plug in all your stats oh. and it'll say, hey, here's the schedule for you in this country. This is when that's you should fun. sleep. This is when you should eat. Google Translate, lifesaver, Life yeah. right? Yeah. It'll, it'll do menus for you. You can actually scan a menu and then it'll tell Wait, you what really? you need to Wait, really? I thought it was just yeah. you talk and then you just no, you can actually out. hold Both. it up on the, onto the menu, and it will translate. Scan the wow. file. Wow. Exactly. This Super was good, helpful. Vicky. Traveling with family and friends is always fun, but sometimes it can be hard to leave your pet behind. Taking them with you, well, that can seem like a fun and simple idea, but did you know there's more to pack than just a leash and a water bowl? Here's your pet travel checklist. So first things first, we want to make sure our pets are safe when we travel. How do we do that? Yes, the number one thing is there's so many of us, 78% of Americans will travel with their pets at some point during the year. And there are 90 million U.S. households that have a pet, according wow. to the American Pet Products Association. It. Right. So as Al says, if you're traveling with your pet, it's not a vacation. Probably more like a family trip. I feel yes, the right. same way about traveling with kids. Not a vacation, family trip. <laughs> but the first thing you want to do is take your pet to the vet at least a couple months mm. before for your planned date of travel because you want to make sure all the vaccinations are up to speed and get a hold of that health record in case you're going out of country or somewhere where they're going to ask you for mm. a rabies certification mm. or proof of vaccination. Then always have a secure collar on your pet and make sure that information is up to date. If you've changed your phone number or changed your address, you want to make sure that's current. Look up the list of emergency animal hospitals just to have it on hand. Put it in a note on your phone. The last thing you want to do is be somewhere remote and not know how to get health care for your pet. And then you think about the weather where you're traveling. Mm -hmm. Try to avoid extreme heat. And here's another thing. If you're driving with your pet, never leave them in the car. Yeah. Even for a minute, quick. it yep. gets hot quick. Exactly. Pets die that way. Also, pet theft is a thing. Mm. If you've got one of those breeds what? that people like, yeah. oh, sure. they are not oh. above oh, yeah. stealing your pet. Absolutely. Wow. Now, so you're, you're going to get ready to travel. And just like for us, we have checklists for what we need to pack. Yeah. Same thing for your pet. Absolutely. So in addition to that secure collar, you want to bring at least one leash, if not a couple. You might be used to having your dog off leash, Bosco, running around mm -hmm. in your home environment. The last thing you want to do is go on vacation and lose your dog in the mountains yeah. of Colorado. Right. The next thing, think about their food, keep it familiar, pack enough, and also a portable water dish and a food dish. Because you're going hiking, you're going outside, right. never underestimate how much water your pet needs. Mm -hmm. 
Same thing, what goes in comes out. So bring those <laughs> compostable waste bags, yep. a litter box. And then when it comes to the medication for your pet, you might be going somewhere where there are fleas and ticks. Ask your veterinarian for some of that medicine that oh. will help keep those bugs off of your animal. And always bring their, their toys that are their favorites and mm. their familiar blankies. It just helps them to adjust. Also check yeah. the carrier, because we did the, we were tra traveling with Pepper and she had outgrown her carrier oh. that we had oh, originally. Wow. It was like, uh oh, there's a little Squeezer. tight squeeze. <laughs> oh. Very good to keep them secure too in the car. People People think just let your dog run around or your cat, whatever. They actually have these restraints and little seat belts for your pets oh with a harness. Mm -hmm. It's safer for you as the driver and for the animal. So wait, how much <laughs> does it cost? Right. Like, do you have to buy a ticket? Like, I don't even know how that works. So if you are going to fly with your pet, first thing, go to the USDA's APHIS website. That stands for Animal Plant Health Inspection Service. And they actually have a great checklist for what kind of pets are allowed into the country, out of the country, kind of the requirements and a checklist there. A ferret is a pet. A pheasant is poultry, so they are oh, no. no. different <laughs> categories. If you've got a pheasant that you're traveling with, you've got problems. You know what, though? Remember, people were traveling with oh, those cocks. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, yeah, yeah, the service animals. animal scam. And then what scam. do you do? Leave them at security? I mean, you got to... Well, that's the best thing to do is drive, obviously, if you have an animal that's too big to fit into the cabin of the plane. I think most pet experts and veterinarians agree. You really don't want to fly them in cargo, especially yeah. during the summer. Anything can happen. You don't have eyes on them. Every airline, you know, has different rules, so just make sure you're aware and make sure that you test the carrier ahead of time and put little treats in there so your pet gets used to being in a carrier. Mm. If you have a dog or cat and prefer to board your pet while you're on vacation, the American Kennel Club says it's important to find the right boarding facility for your pet. Visit the kennel first in person. Ask about their immunization requirements. And while you're there, check to see if the spaces are clean, secure, and temperature controlled. And if you're not comfortable leaving your pet at a kennel, consider a family member, friend, or a professional pet sitter. If you are hiring someone, make sure you ask about their past experiences check their references, and watch how they interact with your pet. All right, coming up, a roadmap to saving this summer. We'll reveal the top deals and tell you the best time to buy. And later, we'll break down the most popular side hustles to help you earn some extra money. We're back right after this. Welcome back to Consumer Confidential. Inflation still has many Americans watching what they spend, but you don't have to skimp on summer essentials. There are some simple ways you can start saving right now. Sometimes we like to do a macro view of this. So is this going to be a summer of savings? Is it possible? Look, inflation is still certainly on yeah. everyone's minds, Hoda. We want to save. We certainly want to save during summer. So let's get started. If you want some tools, gadgets, this is the time to go to Lowe's, Home Depot, Sears to look for those items. Okay. 
Guns out, guns out, Hoda. <laughs> guns uh, out. Guns out. Your yes. these guns, these guns. Your athletic apparel, yeah. shoes, socks, sports bras. All of your favorite athletic brands shop now. Athleta, Nike, Puma, Reebok, Adidas. They're going to have deals because people want to get outside and get Okay. Fit. You don't think about this, but first aid supplies. Oh. You get out there, you've got cuts, bruises, bug bites. This is a good time to refresh that first aid supply kit you have in your car and okay. your home. And Bath and Body Works has what they call their queen of sales, up to 75% off of lotions and potions mm -hmm. right now. Body shop as well. Don't forget about your pets, not just the four-legged ones. Chewy has a huge blue box sale up to 50% off of pet supplies for hamsters, guinea pigs, farm animals even. So are there ways, like what's the way to save other than knowing that these are some good ideas? Those are good places to yeah. go. I want you to think about store brands, especially yeah. when it comes to sunscreen and bug repellent. Okay. Here's the thing, as long as you have the active ingredients to protect you against UVA for aging and UVB for burning, yeah. broad spectrum sunscreen, the store brands are perfectly fine. Same with repellent, look for something that has DEET. And when it comes to food, Consumer Reports is constantly doing testing. They say the quality and taste of store brands is great and you can save a lot that way. Mm -hmm. When you go to the store, look yep. for those manager markdowns, especially on meat. This is the, the items that are getting close to their best if used by mm -hmm. date. Sometimes those are 50% off and meat's a really expensive part How of your How close to that? Budget. Like, it, let's say the expiration date is tomorrow. Can you go a day or two past that? Absolutely, if it says best buy. Buy, right? yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's a very tricky thing with the USDA and the FDA because it's difficult to say what is the absolute expiration date of something. Sure. Best by date, you can absolutely go over a little bit. So you can hug sure. that date that or go past it. the highest it. quality, freshest, but you can certainly still eat it. Okay. Um, your rewards programs, anywhere that you're shopping loyally, you do want to look and see if they have a pro program that gives you points. Mm -hmm. Ibotta, I-B-O-T-T-A. Is this I another one of those? I want you to try this app. It's another okay. one of those. Wait, say it again. I, I B O T T A. And what, yes. okay, so what do I do when I get the app? You buy your groceries, you get the app, you take a picture of your receipt, and there are certain items you will get a full rebate on. Wait, we talk what? about it during Thanksgiving because often you can get a full Thanksgiving meal for free. You buy it, you take a picture, they send you a check for the full amount. Okay. Also, the grocery store apps, these can be annoying, but if you shop through them, a lot of times there are digital coupons that are only available in the app. Worth the savings. Let's get grilling. Okay, so the best time to buy a grill is towards the end mm -hmm. of December. But okay. let's say you need one now. Right. You can go to the store and see if they have floor models that are on sale. Oh, that's good. Check secondhand websites like OfferUp.com or okay. Facebook Marketplace. That's another good place. Mm -hmm. Online liquidator Overstock.com has sales on grills as well. Mm -hmm. um, but generally, you want to wait till the end of the summer if you can. Okay. And when it comes to pool toys, yeah. Remember, these aren't items that are meant to be passed on for generations. So you can go to Dollar Tree <laughs> or Dollar General and look for those items there. Arka, do we have some items that maybe we should avoid buying at this point? It sounds so counterintuitive, Hoda. What should Hoda, we buy? Right. But you should avoid summer clothes and swimsuits right because now. Because why? Because they're going to go on sale yeah, in yeah. August when everybody's trying to make room for their fall inventory. But here's the thing. You're like, I need a cute dress right now for now. a summer barbecue. Try this app. Retail expert Rachel Warch says it's called Benny. B-E-N-I. Okay. It scours all kinds of second-hand e sales okay. for brand name items for really good prices. Okay. So try that. Of course, your neighborhood thrift store, consignment store is a great place to get cute summer clothes as well. Okay, you want to wait on air conditioners. Mm. You miss the sales in May. If you can wait, August and September, they'll go on sale again. Same with patio furniture. This is like the grills. Wait till the mm -hmm. end of the summer. Best deals, less selection. And finally, Amazon Prime Day for electronics. That's coming up the second week of July. Sure. Wait till back to school if you're getting a computer or a laptop. It's a good way. So we should plan ahead for next year. Next yeah. year, we're going to start buying at the right time. <laughs> okay. All right. And remember, only buy items if you can afford them. Don't go into debt just because you see a deal. And while it may be tempting to use that buy now, pay later option, don't miss any of those payments or you could face penalties. And lastly, make sure you read the return policy for every store before making any purchases. So to come, do you want to earn some extra money? We will share the side hustles that are worth trying that are perfect for summer when Consumer Confidential returns.
Well, welcome back. Summer is in full swing and the season brings new opportunities to earn some extra cash. If you find yourself with some free time, consider starting a side hustle. These days, social media is filled with creative ways to boost your income, and we broke down the best ideas. Let's define side hustle first. Okay, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a job on the side of your normal main hustle, your main job, and a lot of people are doing it. Bankrate just did a survey and found 39% of Americans have some sort of side hustle, and of that, 44% of them say they're likely to keep it because of inflation and what else. The most common side hustles, delivery driving, grocery it. deliveries, mm. ride shares, also, filling out online surveys, taking part in focus groups, and reselling things. You can make oh, that much money? You make doing... about $810 on average. Wow. wow. Yeah. I would assume that the summer provides some unique opportunities for side hustling. Yes, Craig. So first of all, a lot of people are going to be revenge traveling this summer, right? Mm -hmm. Heads up demand. Yes. Everybody's going to be out. They can't take their pets with them. So any uh, kind of pet sitting, dog oh. walking. There's a service called Meowtel, which can hook you up if you're really into cats. They do a whole screening. It's a 60-day trial. But there are services in addition to just posting on your neighbor group to say, hey, I'm available. The other thing is rentals. We all know about Verbo and Airbnb mm -hmm. if you're lucky enough to have an entire house that sure. you can rent out. Swimply for pools, that's actually really taking off. People love to be able to rent a backyard pool for idea. a birthday party or something yeah. like that. But also clothing. So there are a couple places called, uh, let's see, what, what are they? Rotate Your Closet, uh -huh. uh, Clothing Cycle, Toolery as well, where you can actually rent your own outfit. Let's say you bought some nice things for special occasions. You've worn them once. Yeah, I know, but apparently no, but people are a doing gown. It. Let's say a beautiful gown. gown. You spend a couple hundred bucks on this gown, and or you thousands of or dollars. Thousands people of dollars, do, quite right? frankly, that's being nice. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, well, actually, no, no seriously, back that's out. where you. No, you guys are wrong. Cycle is one of them. I know. 100%. I'm curious about it myself. It's yeah. fairly new, but people are doing it. Absolutely. Multiple services. So look that up. Gowns. And then yes. finally, Al, you were talking about laundry. So if you want to drive, deliver, and pick up people's laundry. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jen Jolly, a friend a of the idea. third hour, mm -hmm. she recommends a service called Poplin, and there's another one called Laundry Care. So a lot of these, oh, and baby equipment. This is a big one. I oh. haven't oh. thought about this. Baby Quip. So if you have cribs, yep. strollers, uh -huh. pack in place, people travel, they have their babies with them. They're not going to bring all that stuff. If you've got idea. a car big enough to rent some of those things out, oh, apparently you that. can make a fair amount of money a month doing it. Mm -hmm. So I have a question for you. What are the tax implications for that? That's the main thing you want to consider. Well, so taxes are important. Death and taxes are the only two things we can't avoid, right? Yep. So anything over $400, you will have to pay federal taxes on. So you want to really make sure that you're keeping track of your side hustle mm -hmm. income. Now, what about if you want to, maybe a lot of people, as you mentioned, rent out your house, things like that. Yes. There are local laws and things you got to worry about. Right? Yeah, we just had a little graphic on there about laws and regulations and permits. And that is so important because in New York City, for example, if you want to do an Airbnb, you got to get it registered with the city and you have to reside there. So it, you can't just Good. buy a bunch of different yeah. places and then, and then rent out. them out. You really want to check and it's very much based on not just your state or your county, but even your municipality. When it comes to insurance and permits, well, if you're renting out a pool, you can think lots of things could happen, right? Sure. Swimply offers a million dollar policy, $10,000 if there's property damage, but you need to check with your HOA. If yeah, you're there are a lot, of a lot of property owners are, are pushing back on Yes, this. complaining about noise yeah. and, you know, the crowds and parking. So that can be an issue in your neighborhood you want to know before you invest in this. And of course, what's the cost of maintenance? Are you cleaning mm -hmm. these places out? Are you hiring a service? How does that cut into potential earnings? Vic, I, we just did a segment a few minutes ago uh, and earlier this morning as well on the teenage job market this summer being the hottest perhaps ever. What are some things that these prospective job holders should keep in mind, these teens? Oh, well, it's the summer of teen jobs for sure. Pretty much if you are a teenager who wants to work, there will be a job for you, whether awesome. it's in food service, in retail. Summer camps are huge. It's a little late for that right now, mm -hmm. but there may still be some opportunities. But the wages, median wage right now, about $14. That's up from 1150 wow. back in 2019. And the summer job availability for teenagers has increased every year from 29, uh, 2021 till now. That's our time for now. Be sure to join me for another edition of Consumer Confidential right here on Today All Day. For all of us at NBC News, I'm Vicki Wynn.
of us think about Detroit, Motown, car manufacturing, even sports comes to mind. But when it comes to food, the folks here in the Motor City are all about one famous Frank, the Coney Dog. And no, we're not talking about Coney Island in New York. In Michigan, a Coney is both a diner to locals and a hot dog smothered in chili, topped with onions, and finished off with a <laughs> of mustard. Now there are dozens of Coney's in the Detroit metro area. Some bear the Coney Island name, others don't. But you'll always find some type of sausage, a bun, and a signature meat sauce on the menu. So what makes Michigan crazy for Coney's? Let's find out. The relationship be between Coney's and Detroit, it's a long relationship. It's a long love story. The Coney. It's, it's a part of Detroit. If you can drive and eat a Coney, it's not a Detroit style Coney in my opinion. It's time to head out of Studio 1A and hit the road for a new kind of culinary adventure. Follow me as I taste some of the most iconic foods around the country and meet the families behind them. Together, we're gonna learn how a good meal has the power to connect us to our past, our future, and each other. Welcome to Detroit. What do you say we travel back in time to the earliest days of the Coney? The folks at American Coney Island have been dishing up this local specialty for more than 100 years. In fact, this restaurant and the one next door, well, they've got a shared history. But American has been run by the same family for three generations. Founded by a Greek immigrant, this restaurant story is synonymous with the legendary hot dog of this city. What do you say we go meet the family? One to go plain, one fry. At American Coney Island, hot dogs aren't just a meal, they're memories. Grace Kiros is the third generation owner of this legendary spot. Grace. Al. Hi, good to How see you it? again. Good to see you. Long time. It is. We sat down to talk Coney traditions, turning points, and of course, toppings. People are very passionate about their Coney Island hot dog. Here. Yes, they are. Why? Because it holds a nostalgia and a tradition to them. We see daily generations of people coming in here. Remember grandpa bringing them, my mom brought me. It, it's part of their growing up, it's part of their life. 30 years ago, Grace took over the restaurant reigns from her dad, Chuck Kiros. Chuck inheriting the business from his father, founder Constantine Kiros, AKA Gust. Your place, this place on this corner, has been here for 105 years. What is it like being really part of the fabric of, of an iconic city like Detroit? It's surreal. I mean, I think back to my grandfather and my dad and the things they saw here from, from riots to Tigers winning the World Series when they were good. Such a deep history and, and proud. Mm -hmm. I love this city. The Coney craze in Detroit is really a legacy of the Kiros family. Historian Joe Grimm co-writing the book on Coney's in the Motor City. The Kiroses came to Detroit from Dara in Greece, where this was a sheep herding town, and they needed to find work. And they really struck gold, as in the color of mustard, when they started making these Coney Island hot dogs. In the late 1800s, Greece was facing a massive economic crisis setting off a wave of global migration. By 1920, it's estimated that over 400,000 Greeks immigrated to the United States seeking new opportunities. Like most European immigrants of the era, they passed through New York before moving on to other parts of the country. They entered, most of them, through Ellis Island, which is near Coney Island. They saw people on Coney Island and in New York eating hot dogs and said, ah, we're gonna go into the hot dog business, but we're gonna top it with something Greek now, the true origins, like who invented the Coney dog, lost to history. It just sort of happened in a lot of places in about the same time, mostly by Greek immigrants. Gust and his brother, Bill Kuros, opening one of Detroit's first Coney shops in the early 1900s. A family rift caused the brothers to split, leading to side-by-side -side Coney operations and a long-lasting restaurant rivalry. Detroiters swearing allegiance to American or Lafayette, but only American is still owned by the Kiros family today. We figure well more than 100 Coney Islands can trace their lineage directly to that flat top grill. 
Each Coney spot in the Detroit area and throughout Michigan has its own history from National to Kirby's to Nikki D's, from Berkeley Coney Island to L. George's to Leo's and more. But all of the city's Coney's have a similar foundation, starting with a steamed bun. You add a beef and pork hot dog. Then it's covered with a chili sauce. And the chili sauce is where Coney owners can improvise and innovate. And then on top of that, it's going to be a yellow salad mustard and diced onions and never any ketchup. If you put ketchup on a Coney dog, you might get thrown out of the restaurant. Definitely a controversial condiment here. Definitely no ketchup. But I see ketchup behind. We that... sell french fries. When customers come to the carryout and want, you know, I'll have a Coney with everything. Every once in a while you get, okay, I want ketchup on mine too. We don't do it. We refuse to put the ketchup on the hot dog. And we've had people some good, a little upset with us. I'm like, Dude, I'm not putting ketchup on the hot dog. Your, your grandfather immigrates here from, from, from Greece. Greece. Why hot dogs? It was something that he had seen when he landed at Ellis Island in New York. He saw, you know, the amusement park. You gotta remember, he was a young man, came over with no money, I mean, borrowed a pair of shoes. He heard the automotive business was hiring in Detroit, made his way to Detroit, thinking they'll hire me even though I don't know how to read or write. They didn't. On this little corner right here where we are now, he started a little push cart. You know, we're Greek, right? We know food. So grandpa remembered the hot dogs, made a Greek chili sauce. Our chili is a little unique. You hear about a Coney Island hot dog. You think yes. about Nathan's in New York City. But here's the difference. I'm going to stop you. OK. A Coney Island in New York is an amusement park right. that sells hot dogs. In Detroit, a Coney Island is the actual, it's the hot dog with the chili, mustard, onions on it. That's the difference. And I got a lot of heated arguments with people about that. Really? In Detroit, it is the actual thing you're eating, thanks to my grandpa, because he named it American Coney Island. He was so grateful he was in America and all the opportunities were given to him. Grace now in charge of carrying on the family legacy. It's obviously been passed from generation to yes. generation here. But each time you lose a member of the generation, it, it's got to be tough. You just lost your dad. Yes. Uh, not too long ago. Yeah, six months ago. When you come in, do you feel him here? I do. I, I, yes, I do. And I feel a sense of pride. I miss him a lot, obviously. But I, I just feel his presence. I feel everything he, he taught me. My grandpa did his thing. Then once my dad stepped in and took over, he took it to the next level. Then I took it to a whole nother level, with my brother's help included. Grace's brother, Chris Soteropoulos, helps run the business today. There's an American outpost at the Detroit Zoo, plus a new location in Las Vegas. They're also shipping Coney kits all across the country. You get everybody yeah. from all walks of life, exactly. every demographic, every racial component, you everybody it, comes here. Yes. The American Coney is the great equalizer. It, that's, I love the way you put it that way, Al. Exactly. We love the, our customers. I mean, our customers are like family. It's no joke. This is who made us. So we treat you like family. We don't know any different. Coming up, I learned how to make the quintessential Coney. One up! Right there, nice shot. Yeah.
At American Coney Island, the oldest family-run Coney spot in Detroit, they keep things traditional. But you know, as I look at your menu, and I look at the pictures, they're uh, v vintage, let's That's say. It doesn't look like you have strayed that much from the original menu. We haven't. I, I won't. Why add to it when it's working? You know what else is working? Me. I got behind the grill with Grace to prep the perfect plate of conies. This is the proprietary hot dog. If you notice the natural casing. Yes. It's a 90% beef, 10% pork with a lambskin casing. That's that, like three meats in one. You exactly. Get. Pork, beef, and, a, and that's lamb. That's right. And that's what makes it pop. Like when you bite into it, oh, it snaps snap. like a party in your mouth. Yes. yes. That detail kept popping up everywhere we went. It's a warm bond. It's the, it's the snap of the hot dog. When you bite it, you hear that pop. You can tell it's a natural casing because when you bite it, it snaps back at you. The steamer bun. Ah. That's they, what we were taught. They're in a oh, steamer. You know, there's steamer. just enough steam in mm -hmm. here. So you're going to pull out the bun. Right. Look, look for the cut. Yep. So open it up a little. Grab your plate. Yes. All right, so we're going to grab one. Right. Come over here. Do you want to top it or do you want to I want to watch the top. Okay, give it a little mix. Little, this is that. Little zhuzh. Greek fiat, yeah, that's right. It gets a little messy. Some chili. Add a little more. You know, mm -hmm. be cheap with the chili. Greek spices. Yes. That's the magic. The secret spice blend? Well, it's secret. But the chili is made with ground beef. The tangy mustard. Tangy. Just a little lime. Nothing, nothing more. You take some onions, sprinkle them across, and there you go. Boom. Okay. 105 years. 105 years of magic. magic. My turn. Get a plate. I need one up, which means I one. need one for a customer. One for Everything a customer. Everything on it. Chili, mustard, onions. Get the split. Open it up a little more, El. Little All more. right, that's not too bad. OK. <laughs> Boom. All right, now keep, I come over here. Keep the bun open because you want oh, the chili oh, to go in. Oh, you want the chili to go in. Yeah, you want the chili. You want it, yeah. I want that you chili. Don't chintz out on that yeah, chili. Really, don't chintz on the chili. Turn your dish a little so it's easier oh, for you to pour over there. All right. There. Oh, that really, it does have a creamy See, consistency. See, it's really creamy, right. Exactly. mustard. There you go. Ooh, that's heavy mustard. Did they order heavy mustard? Um, no, they didn't. <laughs> I, I'm making this for myself. <laughs> exactly. There you go. All right. One up. Ready. There, yeah, nice shot. Yeah. Awesome. Woo! Good job, Al. Hey, now. Life-changing experience. Mm. It's magic in your mouth. Every great Coney needs a great bun, but not just any bun will do. A few miles from downtown Detroit is another family-run institution that's keeping the Coney tradition alive. 
What started as a small baking business is now one of the state's biggest suppliers of Coney buns. And that bun is the Coney Island Steamer. That's a good bun. The Coney Island Steamer is a six inch hot dog bun. At Metropolitan Baking Company, they like big buns and they cannot lie. The Coney Island Steamer bun is our flagship item on the bun and roll line. Not to mention, they claim to have buns of steel. These buns sit in a steam table. The product's formulated for that steam table. That bun is going to sit there, and it's not going to fall apart on you when you load it with all those condiments. In Michigan, Coney dogs aren't just a tasty meal. They're big business. The Coney business gave rise to supplier industries, just as the auto industry did. So we need to have a major bun maker here. The big maker nowadays is Metropolitan Bakery, and they bake these Coney dog buns with the sponge dough method. For three generations, the Cordes family, who also traced their roots back to Greece, has risen to the occasion selling specialty breads. Metropolitan Baking Company was founded by my grandfather in 1945. In the beginning, Metropolitan only sold simple loads. Today, they produce dozens of items for grocery stores, high-end restaurants, and of course, Coney Diners. And while their products have changed over the years, a few names have truly stood the test of time. He was George James Cordes, uh, namesake, and my father is James George Cordes, and I'm George James Cordes. My father, and just like me, it was, it was, was bred in the business. George credits his father for the company's massive expansion in the mid 80s. This summer, we're gonna be producing millions of Coney Island steamer hot dog buns. This abundance, pun intended, is all thanks to automation. Automation is, is really what transformed this company. We went from packaging maybe 10, 15 loaves of bread a minute to 140 loaves a minute. In 2001, after years of recipe testing, the signature steamer bun was added to the product line. It is a hot dog bun that we've formulated to be used at the Coney Island restaurants um, in Metro Detroit specifically. This bun that we produce is in roughly 95% of all Coney Island restaurants. And it takes a lot of dough to make all those buns. So what we're doing right now, this is where it all begins. This is the mixing room and we're about to create a 1,600 pound dough batch of hot dog buns. Major ingredients are gonna be flour is 65%, you know, then you've got your yeast, you've got your sugar, you've got your oil, you know, and a bunch of, bunch of proprietary ingredients. Any minute. That's um, roughly 1,200 packages of Coney Island steamer hot dog buns. There you go, you did it. <laughs> that makes over 14,000 buns. After mixing, the dough gets cut into bun-sized portions. You're looking at three-foot sheets that were just guillotined, and now they're going into a smaller divider to be put into roughly uh, 1.25 ounce dough balls. Next up, time to proof. After 60 minutes, the dough has risen. And after about 10 minutes bake time, we're gonna have a fully baked hot dog bun that's prepared to cool. The buns are almost ready. The product's sliced, you know, after the cooling conveyor, and then it's paddled on top of each other to create a 12 pack, a dozen buns. The baskets are headed down to logistics and ready to be set up for routes. Then it's off to stores in Michigan's finest Coney restaurants, including American Coney Island. While the factory may have a lot of machinery, George has always been hands-on. So I worked here every summer throughout high school and throughout college, almost every position. And you really learn what hard work is as a kid to work in a bread factory you know, when it's 110 degrees out. When Grandpa George started the company, he had fewer than 10 employees. Today, they've got almost 100. When they say employees, family and family employees, that's what John is. He's literally family. John Grabowski has worked with all three generations of the Cordes family. At 12 years old, he took a summer job washing buckets at Metropolitan. Today, he's the plant's lead engineer. It's like family. When you come to this business, everybody that's here, they feel like family to me. Everybody says hello to each other. It's a good camaraderie. Everybody likes each other. It's more than just bread and butter for the employees. 
it's really nice being run by a family owned business. It, you can come to work and feel like you're at home. It's like a second family to me. We all work together, we, you know, we get down in the dirt, you know, we exchange uh, all kinds of work habits and we learn from each other and we do the best we can. The longtime employees are proud, keeping Detroit's Coney tradition going strong. We all grew up eating ponies, right? Comerica Park, you know, baseball games as a kid with mom and dad and the grandparents, family time. Pony dogs go, that's a part of pretty much everybody's childhood. It's a joy to be a part of that heritage. Today, Metropolitan's running six days a week, 20 hours a day. The amount of product that we're sending out each day, from the first dough that's kicking out around 1.30 in the morning till the final package at 10 at night, I feel constant pride. As for the future, George's kids seem to have inherited his love for the bakery. My daughters, Cecile and Sloan, I, I bring them almost every Saturday. They actually tell me that they enjoy it more than Disney World. This is their favorite place on earth. Just like what it was for me as a kid that age. It's that joy and a family legacy that George hopes will carry on for many years to come. I absolutely love what we're doing here. I love our history. I never want to be that third generation cliche. You know, I want to continue the growth with my kids, They're my kids' kids, have them look back, family members, and say, wow, that's incredible. Look at what you've done. Chili, mustard, onion. What happens if you reverse it? <laughs> oh, you're out. You're out. You're out. You're out. <laughs> Minutes from downtown is Detroit's Brush Park neighborhood. Folks here are flocking to enjoy the good vibes at this cool county spot. CMO may be relatively new to the game, but loyal fans can't get enough of their chili, mustard, and onions. CMO, get it? But unlike most diners in town, here, the coney, the sauce, and everything else on the menu is powered by plants. My name is Pete Lacombe. I'm the owner of Chili Mustard Onions in Detroit, Michigan. You could say opening a vegan coney spot in the coney capital takes guts and grit. And that's exactly what this family's made of. I don't follow any rules. I follow the important ones but I don't do what everybody else does. Pete and his wife, Shelly, along with their daughter, Darla, launching CMO in 2018. It's the first and only all vegan Coney spot in Detroit. I would say my wife gave me the biggest kick in the butt to go vegan, and we did. I had a vision that we were gonna open a vegan Coney Island. And I told Pete that, and he told me I was out of my mind. Pete and Shelly have enjoyed many a traditional Coney as lifelong Detroit residents. When Shelly and I got married, she used to tell me all the time that I was gonna open a restaurant, and it was gonna be a vegan restaurant. And I said, yeah, I'm not vegan. So I asked her why she thought I was gonna open a vegan restaurant. She said, you could never hurt an animal or sell animals. And I went, ah, oh, you're so right. Now, the family's been vegan for over 10 years. 
it not only saved my life going vegan and saved my life by doing something I love, um, I got to do something I love every single day with the people I love. Before entering the restaurant business, Pete worked in the auto industry, just like his dad and his granddad. When I was in automotive design, I ate horribly. I smoked cigarettes, I drank a lot. It was just kind of the norm in that field. That was really in my blood, but it wasn't in my soul. Cooking was in my soul. Pete's true passion coming from spending time with family in the kitchen. So we lived really close to my grandparents and what was in my soul was food. I cooked with my grandmas all the time. My grandma, my mom's mom, really should have opened a restaurant. And um, I feel like I'm living that dream through her. That dream now possible with the next generation. So Darla's our manager and she takes care of the customers so well. And seeing the woman that she has become, we're so proud of her. My wife and I, we've been through so much with partners in crime, partners in life, partners in love. And partners in creating a home away from home for every customer. I created CMO, the interior to reflect like my basement or my living room where you could come over and eat at my house. Everybody's welcome in my home. Every day, somebody wants to go tell him how fabulous this place is and how blown away they are with his food. Since it first opened, CMO has been delighting vegans and non-vegans alike with their take on hot dogs smothered in chili. The amount of love and emotion that is put into the food and every bite, you can tell that. I've never had vegan food, but it was really, really good. This just tasted so similar to it would as a, a regular Coney Island. You know, it's hard to come by something that's like so close to like a childhood favorite. Of course, I had to see if this Coney truly lived up to the hype. Hey, Al. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Welcome to my kitchen. Well, this is really cool. We've heard all about this. When you're used to something that is meat. Yeah. You know, getting them to try something that doesn't quite fit what they think it's supposed to be. For me, I let my food speak. If I put something out there on a plate that is incredible, happens to be vegan, that, that changes minds and hearts and, you know, it's incredible. I see your, your, your wife and your daughter standing out there. Are they taste testers? Oh, <laughs> my wife for sure, yes. That's love. It is, oh, it's love. <laughs> And we'll be married 30 years this year. Congratulations. So. Thank you. Let's make some vegan magic. Let's do that. The, the hot dog, what kind of protein is this? It's a pea and soy protein. And this is your chili. What's yes. The, now, what's the protein in here? For this chili? is Beyond uh, Crumble, uh -huh. a plain Beyond Crumble. A lot of Coney places are hush-hush about their chili, but Pete was willing to dish a little. How do you make your chili? I use a blend of spices, salt, pepper, garlic, onion, and a few other things that are top secret. <laughs> We're gonna throw that in our water. Okay. That's the hero right there. Right there. The spice is the hero. The chili's brought to a boil, then thickened with potato starch. It was time to try my first vegan coney. That's a healthy ladle. It is. I usually do a little more than that. Wow. So, yeah. Do a lot of onions. Here they are. Let's give that a shot. That's really good especially the chili. Thank you. How long did you have to work on the chili recipe? You know, I, I hit it right on the head when we first went vegan, mm -hmm. and then I didn't write it down. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> so then it took me about a year after that to really nail it down. But even with a winning recipe, times have been tough for CMO. What was the pandemic like for you guys? It hit us extremely hard, and we're still struggling and fighting, and you know, there's no quit in us, but it's been tough, yeah. How's the future look for you? I really don't know. We're, we're trying. We're working every day, but I, I don't know what the future holds. I really don't. If it's based on the taste of that, your future's bright, my friend. Thank you so much. I that is good. It. Thanks so wow. much. Wow. The history behind Detroit's Coney Dog is truly an all-American tale, from the Greek immigrants who borrowed the name to a mashup of traditional flavors with a boardwalk staple. And now, there's a whole generation of locals who are ensuring that this regional hot dog is here to stay.
Good Wednesday morning. The July 4th holiday is in the books. And while many are still celebrating, others are heading back home and back to work amid some severe weather coast to coast. It's July 5th. This is today.